Good afternoon, Brave Nation, and a special thank you for joining us today. My best wishes and uh, hope everyone is okay in the wake of Hurricane Matthew. Certainly was an interesting trip up here today. It'll be a very interesting trip back from Hickory, North Carolina. But there's football here this afternoon, and the Braves are at Moritz Stadium on the campus of Lenore Rhine University. It's Lenore Rhine's homecoming as the two and three Bears host the four and one and number 24 UNC Pembroke Braves. Should be a very good one, and I'm so glad you're joining us for this broadcast. I'm Cameron Songer as the festivities continue to take place here on the field. John David Moosefield at Moritz Stadium. It seats 8,500. It's just a gorgeous facility. If you've never made it out here, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's the 87th year of football here on this turf field. Obviously, they just put the turf field in a couple of years ago, uh, but a wonderful bowl, kind of a horseshoe situation open on the left side of the uh, my view, my point of view. There's a scoreboard with a video board as well. Just a fantastic on-campus facility here at Lenore Ryan. Uh, seating a little bit more here on the home sideline. It's about five or six rows deep in the end zone and then also on the visitor sideline. Very cool, very unique thing for Division II college football. And the ba and the Bears have historically been, been pretty good here. They were the national runners-up in 2013. So they've had success recently, but Last year, they saw their streak of SAC conference titles and postseason appearances come to an end. Their last playoff appearance was in 2014, and then last year they went just 5-5. Five and five. Like I mentioned, the 2013 NCAA Division II finalist. Three straight playoff appearances in 2012, 13, and 14, and SAC conference championships in 2011, 12, and, or 11, 12, 13, and 14. But the Bears are off to a little bit of a slow start this year. They're 2-3 and three overall, 2-0 and oh in the sack. Uh, their last time out, a 20-17 win at Carson Newman. They also took a loss against Limestone and North Greenville and also beat Tusculum 31-3. That's their last four games for you. But what's interesting about that, again, you could look at one game, one common opponent, and almost dismiss this Lenore Ryan team. Talk to some of their folks up in the press box before the game, and they sort of dismissed their game against North Greenville as something of a fluke where the Crusaders came in and really dominated that game. That was here at Lenore Ryan Stadium, and North Greenville won that game 45-0. That was in week two of the season. Week four, that same Lenore Ryan team went to Pembroke, and the Braves basically throttled them, the final score being 49-35. But the Braves kind of coasted in the second half of that game, ended up moving to 4-0 after that win getting ranked number 21 last week before heading to Tuskegee and dropping a heartbreaker in the fourth quarter against the number 11 Tuskegee Golden Tigers. Final score of that one, 21-16. So the Braves at number 24 in the country right now, looking to get back in the win column with their second straight road game, trying to get to 5-1. and one. Remember, this is a Braves team that went 6-4 and four a year ago. Shane Richardson in his third year as the head coach of the Braves. He's overall 12 and 13 as a head coach. This is his first head coaching job after he was previously the defensive coordinator at UNCP. And I got the chance to talk to him before the game started. Let's go ahead and play that interview for you right now as UNCP head coach Shane Richardson talking to me less than an hour ago about the beginning of this game, the uh, excitement and a little bit of a preview for UNCP versus Lenore Ryan. Here that is for you. UNCP head football coach Shane Richardson. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Cam. All right, coach, a big road game against the Lenore Ryan Bears coming up in just a few minutes. What are some of the keys to success for your team today? Yeah, I think uh, our team just needs to focus on uh, getting back on track. And after what took place last Saturday, I think we need to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do. We learn from uh, the things that really kind of uh, handed us that loss last week. And we had a lot of great concepts for the team that we talked about this week. Had a great week of practice. Um, we're going to focus on some habits and just some little things play in and play out that's going to, I think, really make the difference. And so we just got to make sure we focus on doing what we're supposed to do. Uh, we've got to be able to shake it off also. You know, one loss does not determine our season. 
uh, one game does not determine uh, what takes place from here on out, but it certainly it can motivate us and, and make sure that we're staying on the right track. And I think it is a critical uh, turning point for our season right now today. This Lenore Ryan team has had a lot of success in the past couple of years. What's kind of the scouting report? What are some of the things to watch out for with the Bears? Yeah, I think uh, offensively they're very diverse. I think uh, Coach Keller does a nice job of switching up, run, pass, attacking you in different ways. And so offensively, I think they uh, they come with an attack that can kind of hit you from a lot of different spots. Uh, defensively, I think they're very disruptive, and I think they've got good personnel. Uh, they're they're big. I think they're physical. I think they can move well. I think they're, they're a good combination of a lot of things that you want in the game of football. And so we're certainly going to have to play very, very well today to come out uh, on top. Last but certainly not least, the weather, certainly a, a concern, maybe a factor even. High winds, maybe even a chance of rain. Does that affect anything you're thinking about doing today? Boy, I don't think so. I think it's perfect football weather. I think our guys like this. Um, you know, the winds are very confusing right now. We thought it was going to be just a straight northeast wind, but it's kind of swirling around. It's a great stadium, and it's kind of down in a bowl here. So uh, we've got to just make sure that we're on top of where that wind is hitting us from uh, in terms of kicking game and that type of thing. But great atmosphere. Uh, I think conditions are perfect for football, and we're excited to play this one. All right, Coach Richardson, thanks for joining us. Good luck today. Thanks, Cam. So there you go, folks, UNCP coach Shane Richardson talking about the importance of his team staying focused here today and really challenging Lenore Ryan to make plays to beat the Braves. As it's a interesting Lenore Ryan squad. As we'll tell you a little bit about them over the course of the pregame show. Should give you the, the weather here today. Obviously talked about the storm in North Carolina. It's seriously affected uh, the entire southeastern United States. And our thoughts and prayers with everyone in the path of that storm. But out here in Hickory, a couple hundred miles inland, um, much further inland than Pembroke and the Lumberton areas, where UNCP and Lenore Ryan will probably stay dry today, quite frankly. It's cool, it's windy, it's 69 degrees, and the winds could gust a little bit at times, probably 20 to 30 mile an hour winds, and kind of swirling a little bit. So it could really affect the kicking game, could affect the deep passing game. Uh, dark clouds overhead, the lights are on, but frankly, no rain. So that's going to be a welcome thing for UNCP to see out there on the field. This Lenore Ryan team, they run the ball and they run the ball a lot. They actually have more rushing yards per game than passing yards, 175 rushing yards per game, 121 passing yards. And for UNCP, it's kind of the opposite. They really, they, I mean, they run the ball pretty well. Don't get me wrong. Rontonio Stanley, Miles Grant, both excellent ball carriers. Cliff Jones missed last game with an injury. We'll have to see if we get him out there on the field today. Uh, but between the three of them, the Braves average 155 yards per game on the ground and 239 yards through the air. Patrick O'Brien, the redshirt junior quarterback, in his second season as the main signal caller for UNCP, has picked it up a little bit, had a, a tough go last week, 16 of 38 passing, 128 yards, a touchdown and an interception against a very good Tuskegee defense. Lenore Ryan, they have a solid defense, but it's not quite Tuskegee good. So I think the key for the Braves today, especially with uh, perhaps a little bit of rain and weather, you've got to get the passing game established early and really force the Bears to respect both things because the Bears are really not going to pass the ball very much. They're not going to pass it very well. They have a redshirt freshman quarterback in Gerard Keller. And if they can force the Braves to be one-dimensional and just really run the ball, that'll be an advantage for UNCP. The team's getting ready to take the field here. It is homecoming in Hickory, and the crowd still filing in. There's a big tailgate straight ahead in the parking lot right behind the stadium. And I imagine fans will continue to make their way in once the game gets started. Braves fans, Adidas is the official apparel sponsor for all 17 of UNC Pembroke's varsity athletic teams. Adidas provides some of the most innovative products in the shoe and apparel industry and is one of the most recognizable brands worldwide. UNCP thanks Adidas for all of their support in offering Braves the best 
in apparel and gear. Ever wondered why UNCP sponsor Lumberton Chevrolet Buick Cadillac GMC has such a long name? One reason is the tremendous variety of cars and trucks they offer to meet every need. Great looking Chevrolets, Buicks, Cadillacs, and even GMC SUVs and trucks. They have everything from budget vehicles to top of the line Cadillacs. So why would you shop anywhere else? Try their quick lube and while your vehicle is being serviced, you can see for yourself. That's Lumberton Chevrolet Buick Cadillac GMC located next to Lumberton High School. Coin toss taking place at midfield. The Braves captains on offense, Patrick O'Brien and B.J. Bunn, that's the wide receiver and quarterback tandem. They're roommates, and you know they're looking to step their game up from where it was a week ago. The defensive captains for the Braves, Mark Quinn Hill, Elijah Williams, defensive tackle and middle linebacker, really the heart and soul of the defense for UNCP. Looks like the Braves won the toss. And they have elected to defer. So Lenore Ryan, I believe, will be starting with the football here this eve this afternoon. They were saying this evening in the stadium, and it certainly feels like evening. It's been cooler. It's dark outside, practically, with the dark clouds and the lights being on. Uh, but it is, it is an afternoon game. So 2 p.m. here, Central Time, excuse me, Eastern Time. And the homecoming for the... Lenore Ryan Bears is just around the corner. The teams will take the field. They have to get the band off the field first as they come sprinting off. Back in 30 seconds for the opening kickoff. UNCP wearing their white jerseys, black pants, and black helmets. Lenore Rhine, maroon helmets, maroon jerseys with white numbers, black pants with white and maroon trim down the sides. The Braves will be going from right to left across the field at Moritz Stadium. Matt Davis to kick off for the Braves, back deep to return for the Bears. That's number nine, Sherrod Williams, and number 25, P.J. Lotharp. 15 minutes on the first quarter game clock. Fans on their feet. We are ready to play football. The number 24 UNC Pembroke Braves at four and one and the Lenore Ryan Bears at two and three. Here on the Braves broadcast network, I'm Cameron Songer. Matt Davis puts his hand up, boots the ball deep, and this will go a couple yards back into the end zone. Lotharp will grab it and take a knee and they'll take it back out to the 25 yard line. That's where Lenore Ryan will start as we introduce you to the starting offense for the Lenore Ryan Bears. Their offensive line from left to right, Jacob Sutherland, Tyler Evans, Jaleel Roberts, Jacob Slagle, and Cole Henderson with tight end Ray Beam. The wide receivers are Omar Baker, Victor Brannon, and Alec Philpot. The running back, redshirt freshman Nelson Brown, and the quarterback, redshirt freshman Gerard Keller. So a very young offense here as Omar Baker is one of their three starting receivers. He's a redshirt freshman as well, so just a handful of returning skill position players on either side of the ball. Shotgun formation, the give goes up the middle and the Braves sniff it out and stop it in the backfield. Nelson Brown goes absolutely nowhere. He didn't get back to the line. Marquin Hill just pushed his man off the line and dropped the runner for a loss of a yard. Second down and 11 coming up for Lenore Ryan. As we get the Braves starting defense for you. Aris Brooks, Ed Hopper, Marquin Hill, and Tyler Hinton are the defensive linemen. The linebackers, Garrett Barnett, Elijah Williams, and Cameron Williams. And in the defensive backfield, Sean Everett, Khalil Hollis, Tyler Threet, and Matthew Thomas Quick. Shotgun formation again for Keller. Motion man on the near side. They keep it on the ground with the running back. He dances through the line of scrimmage across the 25, short of the 30. Remember, the line to gain is the 35. That was, once again, Nelson Brown. And he comes up to about the 29-yard line. Tyler Hinton makes the stop, and it brings up third and six for Lenore Ryan. Probably a passing situation for this offense that doesn't complete a lot of passes. The starting quarterback, 
Gerard Keller, who only completes 48% of his throws. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, and the running back, Brown, to the left of the quarterback. We've played just a minute here in the opening quarter. Braves and Bears still tied at zero opening drive. Keller drops back to pass. He's flushed out and wrapped up, and he's taken down, sacked on the play. 94, Alpha Lamine makes the initial contact, sort of held him up, and then the rest of the Braves come in and finish him off. So a three and out on the opening possession for Lenore Ryan, and they will be forced to punt. Their punter is Michael DeStevens, junior from Gainesville, Florida. Excuse me, DeStevens is the punter's name. Want to make sure I'm saying that right for you. Back deep to return for UNCP, All-American B.J. Bunn. He stands at about the 35-yard line. The Steffens sends a low spiral kick, but then it carries. Bunn retreats, makes the catch at the 25. The coverage team is all over him. He's tripped out of bounds at about the 27-yard line, just two or three yards on the return for B.J. Bunn. But it's a good thing he recovered that or caught it in the air because that might have taken a Lenora Ryan bounce right out of bounds. So the Braves take over on offense, starting at their own 28-yard line, led by redshirt junior quarterback Patrick O'Brien. Antonio Stanley, the running back, another redshirt senior, a returning player from last year for UNCP, is in the backfield. Behind the offensive line of Lawrence Keyes, Jaden Funderburg, Chris Hassard, Demarcus Whitehurst, and Daniel Butler. Two receivers right, one to the left. The man on the left is B.J. Bunn. It's a pass play. O'Brien has time, throws to his right over the head of John Allen and incomplete. So John Allen is one of those receivers lined up on the right side. He's joined by Quay Threet and tight end Stedman Rush. And then on the left side, redshirt senior wide receiver B.J. Bunn. All-American a year ago as he came up just short of 1,000 yards receiving. He'll be looking to do better than what he did last week when Tuskegee really kept him from making too much of an influence in the game. He had just three catches for 11 yards. It was the first game he didn't have a touchdown. The snap goes to O'Brien, gives it to Stanley across the 30, gain of about three, and he is tackled there by number seven, Rodney Singleton. The Bears defense looks like this on, along the line. Jonathan Nolan, Chris Green, Ricky Smith, and Xavier Gill. The linebackers, Jordan Forney, Clayton Horn, and Rodney Singleton. And the defensive backfield, C.J. Cody, Sherrod Williams, Tavon Benjamin, and Isaiah Herring. Freshmen sprinkled throughout some seniors. It's really just freshmen and seniors. One junior, Tavon Benjamin. Otherwise, it has a very polarized defense. Third and six for the Braves. Low snap to O'Brien. Has time. Throws left complete. And I don't think Trey Chandler got enough for the first down. They push him all the way back to the line of scrimmage, but it's where the forward progress stopped. Let's see where they mark this ball. They needed to get to the 38-yard line. They will give him that spot. First down, Braves. Very close. As the Braves went four wide there, able to get their man open. Trey Chandler, the senior from Clayton, North Carolina. Listen, just 5'7", 160. He comes out, fullback Dylan Davis back in for UNCP. The Braves have the game's first first down. No score, three minutes into this ball game. Braves from their own 38-yard line. They give it up the middle for Stanley. Gets off one tackle, and that's going to be it. A little bit of pushing and shoving after the play, after Rodney Singleton makes the tackle. As Singleton pounds his chest, looks over to the Bears' sideline. Gain of one for Rontonio Stanley as the Braves continue to try to just establish their offense, really try to figure out what they're trying to do and keep the run and the pass play an option and make Lenore Ryan respect both of them. 11 and a half minutes to go now in the first half, or in the first quarter. No score yet as the Braves have the ball for their first offensive possession. Shotgun formation for O'Brien. They motion Chandler across the formation and shovel it to him. Tries to cut outside, now spins back towards the middle, off one tackle, tackled short of the 40-yard line. He got just a yard there, and it brings up third and eight. Kalen Elkins making the tackle there. Junior from Charlotte, North Carolina, has his 19th tackle of the year. And now a passing situation for UNCP. Third down, and they'll say nine. Ball from their own 39-yard line, spotted on the right hash. O'Brien in the shotgun, three receivers lined up to the left, just one to the right. It's B.J. Bunn alone on the far side. Snap to O'Brien, four-man rush. O'Brien with plenty of time, surveys the field, now rolls to his right. Throws on the run, has Bunn into the Little Orion territory. First down, UNCP. Well, B.J. Bunn getting involved early in the offense. He converts big time for the Braves. They needed eight, they got about 18. And that's enough for a Braves first down. So into Bears territory onto the 44 yard line. Ball stays on the right hash as B.J. Bunn 
stays in the game, stays on the right side of the field, and O'Brien hustles his troops up to the line. Dylan Davis comes in. He's lined up on the left side as a fullback. Rontonio Stanley, the deep back. They motion Davis to the right side, snap to O'Brien. They give it to Stanley off right tackle. He slips and falls short of the line of scrimmage. And that was just a loss of footing there from Rontonio Stanley, and he lost a yard on the play. Second, and they'll say 12 for the Braves' offense. But two first downs already. The Braves taking care of the ball and taking care of time of possession right now. We've played just over five minutes. There's no score between the Braves and the Bears. Homecoming in Hickory, North Carolina on the campus of Lenore Ryan University. Motion, Miles Grant out of the backfield, and they swing it to him on the left side. The throw a little low and incomplete as O'Brien just threw it behind his running back who was moving out to the flat on the left side. So it stops the clock at 9.38 left in the first quarter. No score, and the Braves facing third and long again. They are two for two on third downs so far today. Four wide receivers line up for UNCP. Two to the left, two to the right, and O'Brien is in the shotgun. Play clock still showing 17 seconds, plenty of time. Now a whistle as they will have to take a Lenore Ryan player out because his jersey was falling off, his shoulder pads were coming out. So that's a tough break for Jonathan Nolan, who wanted to play linebacker on that play. Now a couple more guys coming out. Let's see if the Braves, well, they won't let them snap the ball until this substitution gets made. But the Braves do get a fresh play clock. The clock is stopped either way. Third and 12 for the Braves. O'Brien facing a blitz, steps up in the pocket, throws to his right. That's over everything and incomplete. That pass too tall for Trey Chandler. It would have been too high for anybody on that Braves team to go get, but O'Brien stood tall in the pocket, had to get rid of it, and just threw it out of bounds. So the Braves do get into Lenore Ryan territory, but will be hunting here, facing fourth and 12 from the Lenore Ryan 47-yard line. Matt Davis on to punt. He became the punter last week and had seven excellent punts last week. Back deep to return for the Bears, number eight Aaron Farmer. Davis will be punting from his own 40, steps into it, and it sends it high. That's off the side of his foot and goes out of bounds near the first down marker. So, again, Braves fans, not a huge concern as Matt Davis didn't have a great first punt last week either, and then his next punt went for 69 yards. But that's not how you want to start the day after the Braves forced a three and out for Lenore Ryan, got two first downs themselves, had a chance to pin the Bears fairly deep, Instead, the punt goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Matt Davis, not a very good punt there at all. Just a 10-yard punt. And Lenore Ryan will take over first and 10. Now two running backs on either side flanking Jared Keller. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Now they'll motion another man into the backfield. And the give goes up the middle. Stood up and a great tackle from number 91, Khalil Vance. I want to say also correction. New quarterback for Lenore Ryan's number 11, Caleb Scott. So they saw just one possession from their starter, Jared Keller, and Caleb Scott now, the junior from Ontario, Canada, will come in and run the offense. See if the Braves are ready for this wrinkle. Lenore Ryan is known as a running team. They picked up one yard on the run there. Second down and nine. Nine minutes to play in the first quarter. It's a scoreless game. Lenore Ryan's second possession. Keller with the play fake, throws over the middle, incomplete. And he threw it to some open space but there was really no one there. The intended receiver was Victor Brannon, the senior from Powder Springs, Georgia, who's the only returning skill position player on offense. This is a Lenore Ryan team that listed a couple of returners from last year, uh, but either due to injuries or freshmen coming in and earning those starting spots, uh, they're not really there. So it's third and long again for Lenore Ryan, Third and nine in a diamond formation in the backfield. They give it to the running back, trying to dance around. He needs to get near midfield. Got close, but I think he's about a yard short. We'll see where they spot this. That was Nelson Brown again. And a decision here for the Bears. Fourth and one as they keep the offense on the field here from their own 46-yard line. See if the Braves come after this. Aris Brooks doesn't like the way this is looking, and he calls for a timeout. So the Braves stop the action. That also gives Lenore Ryan to think about 
whether or not they actually want to go for this. We'll take this time out with them. 8.20 to go in the first quarter. Bears zero, Braves zero, as we're just getting started here in Hickory, North Carolina, and we'll be right back. Braves fans, season tickets for the 2016-17 home basketball season are on sale now, and premium chairback seats for the Peach Belt Conference's most electric environment can be purchased for as little as $70. This season's basketball package includes 14 men's games and 13 women's games and can be purchased by calling 910-521-6361 or visiting uncpbraves.com forward slash tickets. Cameron Songer back here with you on the Braves broadcast network. 8.20 to go in the first quarter. Bears were lined up to go for it before that Braves timeout. Oh, now a hard count, and somebody jumped early. A flag on the play. Alpha Lamine was ready to come after this punt. They are lined up to punt now. And they will call a false start on Lenore Ryan. I'm not sure that the Bears were actually going to go for it before. They might have just gone for a hard count, see if they could get someone to jump, and then either take the delay of game or quick kick it or something. So they'll back up five yards and back deep to return now for UNCP is Jonathan Allen. He'll be standing between the 25 and 20. Braves come after this kick, but it's a good one. Another spiral, and Allen has to retreat, makes the catch at his own 15. Breaks a couple tackles, lost the ball. It falls down on the turf. Who has it? Looks like UNCP falls on it, and the Braves dodge a bullet there after John Allen couldn't hang on to the punt. A good punt there by Michael DeStephens, and it forces the Braves to start on their own 16-yard line. Taryn Huffman was the one who did fall on that fumble. So 8-11 to go in the first quarter. Braves 0, Bears 0. This will be the second possession for the Braves. They forced a couple three and outs for Lenore Ryan, but now need to try to create a drive of their own on offense. Miles Grant is the tailback for UNCP. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Pistol formation, snap to O'Brien. Play fake, spins, throws to his right. They set up a tunnel screen for Chandler. Chandler with room to run. He's across the 30, stays on his feet. 35, ball comes out again. It's loose on the turf. This time, Lenore Ryan has fallen on it. So two fumbles on two plays, and Lenore Ryan recovers this one. Recovered at about the 38-yard line of UNCP. Make it the 37. This will be the best starting field position for the Bears. After Trey Chandler got a block on the outside, got more than enough for the first down. Would have been a gain of more than 17. Instead... It's a turnover, and the Bears will take over first and 10. So right back out onto the field comes the Braves' defense. And uh, already, Lenore Ryan is approaching the number of total plays that, compared to what the Braves have run. Keller is the quarterback once again now for Lenore Ryan. So each quarterback now has gotten one three-play sequence, and neither has mustered a first down, but this is the first time the Bears are in Braves' territory. Shotgun formation, they give it to the running back off the left side. Just a couple yards as he surges forward. That's Nelson Brown again. He is the primary and I would say also the secondary ball carrier for this Lenore Ryan team. He has 123 carries on the season. His backup, Robbie Hooks, has 17. So unlike UNCP, they really lean on one guy. To put that 123 number in perspective, Antonio Stanley leads the Braves with 67. Miles Grant has 40 and Cliff Jones 37. So just an immense workload for redshirt freshman running back Nelson Brown, but he averages five yards per carry, so why not? He got about four on that one. It's second and six for Lenore Ryan. 7.20 to go in the first quarter, scoreless game. Motion, the snap, give it to the running back again. Brown scoots past one tackle, lowers the shoulder, gets a first down for Lenore Ryan to about the Braves' 25-yard line. Just a nice run there. Garrett Barnett gave some chase but I think overran the play just a little bit. Khalil Hollis finally makes the tackle for UNCP. Lenore Ryan gets to the Braves' 24-yard line. Ball spotted on the right side, but not all the way on the hash as the Bears go from left to right across their home field wearing their maroon tops and black bottoms. Braves wearing white tops and black bottoms. A couple men in motion. 
Two tight ends on the right side of this formation now for Keller. He's in the pistol with running back Brown behind him. Snap, they give it right back to Brown. Cuts into the middle, keeps the feet churning. He's down to about the 20-yard line. Boy, uh, the Braves made contact with him about the 23, so one yard upfield. And then he kept going for another three yards after that initial contact. Really tough to bring down Nelson Brown. 5'10", 220. And he was the sack player of the week a, a week ago for rushing for 200 yards against Carson Newman. Not too often you see a running back go for 200 yards in the mo modern college football game, but he did just that. Right on the edge of the red zone now, Lenore Ryan has the ball, second and six. Diamond formation. Keller gives it back up the middle for Brown. This time the Braves are to him, and he gets maybe a yard on the play. There are five different Braves right around him. And it brings up third down. They give him a yard of forward progress. Cameron Williams, the first Brave to him. So third and five. Lenore Ryan hasn't converted a third down yet today, and the Braves will look to keep this drive uh, from reaching the end zone. Remember the Braves coughed it up on their first offensive play of the last sequence, a fumble by Trey Chandler. That set up the Bears with pretty good field position. Third and five from the Braves' 19-yard line. Diamond formation again for Keller. He's got two running backs on either side of him and one behind him. They give it to a man off left tackle, soaring in, and stopping him short is Tyler Hinton. Boy, it looked like there was room to go there for Robbie Hooks, and Hinton just came out of nowhere, whacked him from behind. That's a gain of just two, maybe three, and we'll call it fourth and two for Lenore Ryan. Again, the offense stays on the field. They're at the Braves' 16-yard line. They need to get it inside the Braves' 15 to about the 14. Same thing, diamond formation, running backs to the left and right of Keller, and a running back behind him. Receivers on each side. Braves go four down linemen, and they're showing blitz. Going for it on fourth down. No, wait, there's a whistle, and a timeout taken by Lenore Ryan. So that's the Bears' first timeout. Each team has already used one timeout, and with 4.42 to go in the first quarter, Bears zero, Braves zero. We'll be right back on this exciting fourth down play on the Braves Broadcast Network. Ref saying both teams need to get out onto the field, and it will be the offense staying on the field for Lenore Ryan. They'll go for it on fourth down. 4.42 to go in the first quarter, no score, and it'll be fourth and two for Lenore Ryan from the Braves' 16-yard line. Motion as they bring a couple tight ends from right to left. One running back, two wide receivers. Both receivers will be on the right side. Snap goes to Keller. Play fake, he rolls to the right. Dumps it off short to the tight end, makes the catch, keeps his balance. It's near the first down marker. The Braves saying he was stopped short, and it's awfully close. Aris Brooks wrapped up Ray Beam right near the 15-yard line. This is all about the spot now. They'll spot it just outside the 15-yard line. Excuse me, with the backside of the ball inside the 15-yard line. They don't even bring the chains over. That's short, and the Braves get the turnover on downs. Back onto the field comes the Braves offense. Lenore Ryan chose to punt once on fourth down and forced a Braves fumble that the Braves recovered. Then the next play, the Braves fumbled. Lenore Ryan recovered, drove into the red zone instead of taking the field goal from their kicker, Hunter Hare, who's a transfer from Wake Forest and has a long of 41. That would have been within his range. They wanted to go for the touchdown, and they come up empty. So the Braves take over once again. They'll start from their own 15-yard line as UNCP goes from right to left at Moritz Stadium on the campus of Lenore Rhine University. The, I don't think the play clock ever started correctly. Patrick O'Brien looked over to the sideline, looked to the official, and they had to figure out what's going on here with the clock. 
It's a reminder, Braves fans, don't miss out on your chance to receive awards for attending UNCP home athletic events during the 2016-17 season. Visit the App Store on your smartphone and download hashtag Brave Nation, UNCP's new fan engagement app. The app can be found on Apple Store or on Google Play. Search hashtag Brave Nation. No receivers to the right, two to the left. Fullback in this formation, diamond, or excuse me, pistol formation. They give it to Grant. Grant tries to dance outside. The Bears have strung it out, and Grant will get just a yard before he's wrapped up and thrown down violently to the turf. Hard tackle there by number 21, C.J. Cody. So the Braves trying to empty out that right side of the field. They'll give forward progress for two yards there for Miles Grant. He's usually more of a, a home run kind of threat, a guy who can really turn up field and get a lot of yards. He averages 8.2 yards per carry on the 40 carries he had coming into today's game. It's good for 320 total yards on the ground. Also had a receiving touchdown. Now the Braves go shotgun. They spread the field with two receivers on each side. Snap to O'Brien against a four-man rush. Throws over the middle. A lot of contact there as he was looking for three. Nearly intercepted. They will finally throw a flag coming from all the way in the back. Uh, the Braves sideline had some outraged gasps as that ball fell to the turf incomplete. They went to three. He got knocked down. It was sort of in the catch radius. It was going to be pretty close to whether that was a catchable ball or not for Quay Threat, but there was obviously a lot of contact. And it'll be an automatic first down for UNCP following a, let's say, contentious pass interference penalty. And the Lenore Ryan sideline is not happy. Head coach of the Bears, by the way, is Mike Keller. He's in his first season here in Hickory after previously being the head coach at California of Pennsylvania. He has a career record of 47 and 23, so he brings a plenty of success, a high pedigree. But the Braves, or excuse me, the Bears have not been very successful on the field yet this year. They're just two and three. Braves come in at number 24. They're four and one. It'll be first and 10 for UNCP following the penalty. 3.48 to go first quarter, no score. Snap to O'Brien, four-man rush. He steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle, has Huffman, breaks a tackle across midfield, and he's finally taken down at about the 45-yard line. Boy, it looked like Isaiah Herring was ready to light him up, and Huffman just bounced off him. So a big gain there for the Braves. Isaiah Steelman finally makes the tackle from behind. Braves hustle up to the line of scrimmage. Grant is the running back. Now they'll bring fullback Dylan Davis on. And back out comes John Allen. First and 10, UNCP under three and a half to go in the first quarter. No score yet. B.J. Bunn alone on the near side. Snap to O'Brien. They give it up the middle for Grant. Grant wrapped up. He tries to keep the feet going. He gets about two yards as he lunges the ball forward. But needs to be careful about leaving it hanging out like that. So after the 27-yard pass to Taron Huffman, Braves pick up two on the ground. Grant will head back to the sidelines. Rontonio Stanley back in as the uh, main running back for UNCP. Braves will keep three receivers in this formation. Huffman on the far side and Bunn and Threet on the left side for Patrick O'Brien as the Braves go from right to left across the field at Moritz Stadium. Dark skies, lights on for this afternoon game. Fullback Dylan Davis to the left of O'Brien. Fakes the handoff. Blitz comes. O'Brien throws to the left. Complete to three to the 25. Three to the 20. Dragged down at about the 16-yard line. He beat his man one-on-one. -on -one. That was Isaiah Herring, who looks to the official, saying that should have been pass interference on the offense. But it's not, and it's a first down UNCP. Now there's a flag on the play. Back near the line of scrimmage. Back in the area of holding. I didn't see it come at the uh, beginning of that play. But it looks like that'll back the offense up. And it is a flag on the offense. It's Rontonio Stanley, the running back, who gets called for holding. So the Bears brought some pressure there. And forced Stanley to step up, try to make a block. Bought enough time for his quarterback, but in doing so, gets called for holding. So the Braves back into their own territory on the wrong side of midfield. It'll be second and about 18 for UNCP. Ball on their own 46-yard line. They need to get to the Lenore Rhine 36-yard line. Shotgun formation. O'Brien has two receivers to the right and two to the left. Gets the snap. Another blitz. O'Brien lobs one short. Looks for Huffman. That falls incomplete. Boy, on the far side, B.J. Bunn ended up being taken down by C.J. Cody. 
almost as though he was being tackled. And if the Braves had gone that way with the ball, it probably would have been pass interference. But it brings up a third and long for UNCP again. And this is a situation they've found themselves in an awful lot already today. 2-11 to go in a scoreless first quarter. UNCP and Lenore Ryan with the specter of Hurricane Matthew looming. No rain, but certainly some wind and some dark skies. Two receivers right, two to the left. Shotgun formation for O'Brien. Just three down linemen, and the Bears rush just three. They set up a screen to the left side for the running back, Huffman. Excuse me, Stanley. And he gets just to the line of scrimmage and not much more. So the Braves go conservative there. They throw the ball to Rontonio Stanley. And he gets about three yards. And it'll be third or fourth down and about 16 for UNCP. Matt Davis comes back on to punt. After a promising start in this game for UNCP, they got first downs on their first couple plays. Two first downs on that opening drive. Nothing else going on. Now Davis will punt from about his own 35. Steps into it and booms it deep. This will bounce at about the 25 and be fielded at the 10. Scooped up and wrapped up. And their punt returner Aaron Farmer gets about four yards on that return. So the Bears will start deep in their own territory after a very good punt by Matt Davis. First and 10 coming up for Lenore Ryan. A minute 24 left in the first quarter. First quarter that's flown by so far. Homecoming week, Braves fans, right around the corner. The basketball teams will host Moonlight Madness on October 20th at 7.30 p.m. That's a free event. So is the wrestling black and gold inner squad, which also takes place on Thursday, October 20th. It all leads up to the homecoming football game on Saturday, October 22nd at 2 p.m. Tight end, three receivers, a motion man, and they th sweep it to the left side. Not a lot of room for the target there. That was P.J. Lotharp makes the carry and gets about two, three yards. Yavel Morris makes the tackle. So Lotharp has mostly been used as a punt returner and kick returner this year for Lenore Ryan. And now Lenore Ryan switching out their quarterback again. They go back to Caleb Scott, the 6'3", 180-pound junior, who's thrown for 95 yards, rushed for 62 yards so far this year. This will be his second chance to get some action. He keeps it on the ground. They pulled it away there on the option. He kept it. Nelson Brown really acted like he had the ball, and the quarterback, Scott, keeps it for about three yards and brings up a third and very short. Call it third and one for Lenore Ryan from their own 22-yard line. And the Braves will be looking for a stop to get that offense right back out onto the field. Neither team has been able to su sustain success here in the first quarter offensively. Play clock and game clock separated by about a second, so they will need to run one more play here before the end of the first quarter. They keep it on the ground with Brown. He surges forward. That looks to be enough for the first down, but it'll be pretty close. So they needed a yard. They got two. Not a big run there for Nelson Brown, but when you're in third and one, it's just not a lot you have to do, and that will be the end of the first quarter. Not a lot of action. If you're just joining us, you didn't really miss all that much. The Braves did get a stop on fourth down. That was probably the key play, but that happened because of a fumble by Trey Chandler that set Lenore Ryan up in Braves territory. We're through one quarter in Hickory, North Carolina. No score between the Braves and Bears, and we'll be right back. Start of the second quarter, and it's the second string quarterback, Caleb Scott, who's still in the game for Lenore Ryan. They have the ball on their own 24-yard line. No score yet in this one. They give it off the left side for the running back, Robbie Hooks, trying to stretch it along the near sideline, and he's pushed out of bounds by the Braves linebacker, Elijah Williams. Gain of about a yard there. 
for Hooks. And it brings up second down for Lenore Ryan. On the Braves broadcast network, I'm Cameron Songer. It's homecoming in Hickory, North Carolina, home of the Lenore Ryan Bears. Bears come in at two and three overall. Braves at four and one. They're also ranked number 24 in Division II football. But a pretty evenly matched first quarter between these two teams. Let's see who comes to play here in the second. Two running backs on each side of Scott and one behind him. They give it to the deep back, Brown. Brown breaks one tackle, gets near the 30-yard line. He stopped at about the 28-yard line. But he takes so many Braves to bring him down. Brings up a third and four. They get third and five for Lenore Ryan on a good carry by redshirt freshman Nelson Brown. They'll move some guys in and out. Looks like they'll try to spread the field now with a couple extra wide receivers. Two on each side for the quarterback, Jared Keller, who comes back into the game. He's their main thrower. Shotgun formation, a running back to his left. Four down linemen for UNCP. So we've played a minute here in the second quarter. No score. Whistle before the snap as there's a flag on the play. And we'll have to see what this flag is for. Offense backing up. That's probably a false start on Lenore Ryan. And it is. So Lenore Ryan already not a great passing team. They average just 121 passing yards per game. And now facing third and 10, the Braves can really pin their ears back now. In that first quarter, Lenore Ryan was outgained by UNCP 77 to 45. And 40 of those 45 yards for the Bears came on the ground. Conversely, for the Braves, just five of their yards came on the ground. So really, you're seeing two very different offenses in this game. Wide receivers are stacked up one behind the other. There's a play fake and now a screen to the near side. Caught, but nowhere near the first down. A hard hit after the catch by number 10, Evan Sims. Tyler Threet was all over him there. Gain of about four. And it brings up a fourth down. Obvious punting situation for Lenore Ryan as they'll be punting from inside their own 20. The line of scrimmage is the Lenore Ryan 28. As the Braves will get the ball back, they'll be going from left to right. Looks like UNCP will try to come after this. B.J. Bunn positioned at his own 25-yard line. And the punter again for Lenore Ryan is Michael DeStephens. Braves come after it, but DeStephens gets the kickoff end over end. Bunn will let it bounce, and it takes a Lenore Ryan hop rolling all the way inside the 20 to about the 16-yard line. A booming punt there by DeStephens, helped out by a bounce. As B.J. Bunn didn't want to come up there on that. He would have had to run forward about six or seven yards from where he was initially situated. Chose to just step away from it and said the Braves will be backed up to start this drive. UNCP offense still looking to get going. 72 passing yards, an average of 12 yards per completion. And the Braves have four first, down comp first downs compared to two by Lenore Ryan. Just a matter of stringing those first downs together and then hanging on to the football. Two fumbles, one of them costing the Braves possession. Well, Brian comes out. He's got two receivers to the left, one to the right. P pump fake, now looking deep, and Huffman is open on the near side. He can't haul it in. It bounces off his hands incomplete. He was turned all around, wasn't sure which shoulder he should be looking over. Ended up trying to make a Willie Mays-style catch at about the 45-yard line. Might have also had an eyeball upfield because there was no one anywhere near him. If he had caught that, he could have sprinted into the end zone for the first score of the game. But instead, we're still scoreless. 12.39 to go before halftime. And the Braves face second and 10, but they took a shot there. And that's more than you can say a lot of the time with Patrick O'Brien in this offense. They like to generally go pretty short with some of their passes. This time, they keep it on the ground. And off the near side, it's Rontonio Stanley across the 20. He stood up. Now some pushing and shoving after the play. But a couple yards there for UNCP on offense. Check that. That's, check that. That's number 37, Josh Sheridan, getting the carry there for UNCP. Behind a lead block from Dylan Davis. So it's third and four, a six-yard carry for Sheridan, redshirt freshman from Lumberton, North Carolina, getting involved in the offense for really the first time in – as far as I can remember, really, the first time this season. Blitz comes. O'Brien rolls to the left. He's in trouble. Throws, and it's short. Incomplete to Quay 3, and the Braves will go 3 and out again. 
My goodness, there's been some interesting creativity in this game by UNCP on offense. They're really trying a lot of different things. Some of it's working. Some of it, execution-wise, has been pretty good and then just not able to really finish. Case in point, that incomplete pass to Taron Huffman. And now Matt Davis will be punting. And he's set up inside his own 10-yard line. Back deep to return for Lenore Ryan is Aaron Farmer. He is standing at his own 35. Rugby-style kick. Davis sits it high and deep. It'll be fielded at the 30. And coming after it, the Braves stopped at about the 35-yard line. Not a lot of room there for Farmer. As Davis got plenty of hang time on that kick, there is a flag on the play thrown near where the line of scrimmage was. Let's see what this flag is on. They look to be pointing on the defense. And as the official turn to the Lenore Ryan sideline, which means this is against the Braves. Illegal formation by UNCP. So, so they'll just tack on five yards to the end of the return. Lenore Ryan will start at their own 40. 11.36 to go in the first half. Lenore Ryan takes over again in a scoreless game. UNCP and Lenore Ryan. It'll be first and 10 for the Bears on their homecoming. Trying to get the first points on the board. 11.36 to go. And it is the second string quarterback again, Caleb Scott, who will be the second. No, check that. It's Keller. Keller is the quarterback. He's in a pistol formation. Got a running back to his left and one behind him. The deep back is the main running back, Brown. They give it to him. He's met in the backfield and wrapped up near the line of scrimmage. Sean Everett was all over that. Looks like the Braves are really starting to key in on the run now. And that was no gain for Nelson Brown. Now the Bears will switch the quarterbacks and go back to Caleb Scott. No, it was just Keller coming off to get a play call from the head coach. So I'm not sure it's really safe or fair to call either quarterback the starter or the second stringer at this point. They just they rotate. They seem to be alternating here today. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, shotgun formation for Keller. He's got a running back in Brown to his right. Rolling the pocket to his right, throw to the right, complete and out of bounds, short of the first down marker, caught by Alec Philpot. But a rare pass play here from Lenore Ryan. The line to gain is midfield, and they'll be three yards short after the seven yard pass play. Third and three, 10.45 to go before halftime. Lenore Ryan has been struggling to move the ball here on offense. They have just two first downs so far. This is their first possession of the second quarter. It will be third and three for the Bears offense. They like to keep it on the ground in these third and short situations. Nelson Brown averages over five yards per carry this season, so why not? They give it to Brown, he's off left tackle, stood up at the 50, keeps going, and he has enough for a first down into Braves territory. A dog pile there at about the 46 yard line. And it looks like Lenore Ryan able to hang on to the ball. A lot of times we see a lot of bodies flying to the ball like that. The ball comes loose, but this time the Bears do move the chains. First and 10, Lenore Ryan from the Braves' 47-yard line. Ball spotted on the left hash, and the Bears driving from right to left across the field. John David Moosefield at Moritz Stadium hosting homecoming for Lenore Ryan. Trying to upset the number 24 UNCP Braves. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation again for Keller. The running back, Brown, with him in the backfield. They give it to Brown. He's met in the backfield, wrapped up as he falls forward. Didn't get much there. Eris Brooks stops him for a gain of just one. Garrett Barnett also coming in and finishing off that tackle for UNCP. Personnel switch again for Lenore Ryan. And this time, the quarterback change does happen. They bring on Caleb Scott. And there's two receivers to the right, one to the left. It looks like they did a basically a wholesale change of the receiving core between those two plays. They're pretty quick and efficient about it, too. Still 13 seconds to get this snap off. About nine minutes to play here before halftime. High snap. A QB option keeper. He runs it towards the right side. Turns the corner, getting out of bounds. Short of the first down. But the UNCP sideline not happy with how free Caleb Scott able to get there on that run. He nets about six yards on the carry and brings up third and three again. So for the second straight sequence, Lenore Ryan faces third and three. This time, the line of scrimmage is the Braves' 40-yard line. Ball spotted on the right hash. 
as the Braves get their play call in from the sidelines. Four down linemen. They're in their base defense with three linebackers. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They keep it on the ground. Brown met in the backfield, and he is wrapped up, tackled for a loss on the play. Dikembe Kearney at the bottom of that pile. He makes the stop, and it brings up fourth and four for Lenore Ryan. The Bears look to the sideline. The offense stays on the field. Let's see if they try to draw the Braves off sides here with a hard count. 8.20 to go in the second quarter. The line of scrimmage is the Braves 41-yard line. Looks like Lenore Ryan's going for it on fourth and four. Play clock at 16. Running backs on each side of the quarterback. Scott, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Scott with the hard count. Looks back over to the sideline. As head coach Mike Keller telling him what to do. Play clock down to two, down to one. And UNCP stays put. The flag comes out. That's a delay of game. So trying to get the Braves to jump off sides on fourth and four. That would have been a five-yard penalty. Would have been an automatic first down. Braves are very disciplined. They stay put. Five-yard penalty on Lenore Ryan. And out comes the punting unit. Michael DeStephens on to punt for Lenore Ryan. This will be his fourth time out punting. He's averaged 50.7 yards per kick. B.J. Bunn back deep to return. He's standing at his own 10-yard line. Low kick, spiraling towards the corner. It bounces and into the end zone. Wow, that was just a couple inches from getting out of bounds at the one-yard line. There is a flag on the play, and it's in the area where UNCP was trying to get towards the punter. The officials discussing this flag. Now 7.33 left in the second quarter. Officials thinking this is a chop block. And that should help the Braves out tremendously. The result of the play was a touchback, and they'll take it out to the 20-yard line. But now the officials talking things over and explaining what happened. Oh, it's a... Illegal block on UNCP. A 10-yard foul. I believe they said that was number eight, Taryn Huffman. He's had a rough go of it today. Dropped a pass on a long ball along the near side. That probably would have resulted in a touchdown. And now a penalty on him. Antonio Stanley's been called for a holding. The Braves have been flagged uh, more than... I would say more than usual, and definitely more than they would like. First and 10 for UNCP, but from their own 10-yard line, they keep it on the ground with the running back, Stanley. Stanley gets five yards on the carry, straight up the gut. It's just what the doctor ordered there. They need to get out of the shadow of their own goalpost, and Antonio Stanley with a strong carry. Second and five coming up for UNCP from their own 15-yard line. 7-10 to go in the second quarter. No score in this one. A low-scoring affair. A no-scoring affair between UNCP and Lenore Ryan. Braves driving from left to right. They're the visiting team under the floodlights. Dark skies this afternoon. Another give to Stanley. Tries to go left side. He is met in the backfield and thrown backwards. Stays up, though. And Lenore Ryan clapping their hands. They're pretty excited about that tackle. Leading the charge was outside linebacker Rodney Singleton. He'll say it was no gain on the play. No Got to say, give Rontonio Stanley a lot of credit. He did not go down. He stayed upright, and it's where his forward progress stopped, which was the line of scrimmage. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Lenore Ryan urging their fans to get into this now on third down. O'Brien in the shotgun with a running back to his left. Play clock down to nine, 6.20 to go in the half. St pass to the near side complete. Allen needs to try to make something happen with his feet. He's near the 20-yard line, but I don't think he ever got there. Comeback route from John Allen in the slot. UNCP signaling for a first down. The officials disagree. It's going to be fourth and inches. UNCP inside their own 20, and that'll, that'll draw the punting unit back out onto the field. So the Braves go three and out again. And this is really turning into a defensive struggle for both teams. Neither team can really move the ball. Braves at 89 yards of total offense. Lenore Ryan at 68, and uh, we've played more than 19 minutes, approaching 20 minutes of football played. Davis on to punt, 
excuse me, 25 minutes. Another great kick spiraling all the way inside the 20 yard line. It bounces towards the 10, that's where it'll die. Matt Davis just unleashed an absolute cannon off his right foot. Officially, a, let's see, let's do the math. That was a 70 yard punt from Matt Davis. And that flips field position in the biggest way. The line of scrimmage was near the 20 yard line of UNCP and Lenore Ryan will take over on their own 10. My goodness, a 71 yard punt for Matt Davis. He's a kicker, he started the season as the kicker and Nate Williams was the punter. Now Matt Davis is doing both and why not? That was insane. First and 10 from Lenore Ryan. Ball spotted on their own 10. They have a couple extra tight ends in this formation. And they give it off the right side for Nelson Brown. Just tries to scoot up field, splits a couple tacklers, but then he's taken down for a gain of about two. Give him three yards on the carry. And he brings up second down. Wow, they'll actually give him four yards on that run. Just a great job of continuing to keep the legs moving after the initial contact. Five minutes left now in the second quarter. Garrett Barnett made that tackle for UNCP. No score between UNCP and Lenore Ryan. Two receivers to the left, none to the right, some extra tight ends. Pistol formation for Keller, gives it back up the middle for Brown. Brown diving forward across the 15 to about the 16, and it brings up a third and about four for the Bears offense. So Brown has been really the bulk of the Lenore Ryan offense today. Take a look at what he's done. Lenore Ryan's attempted just five passes versus now 21 carries. Nelson Brown has 17 carries. We're not even to halftime yet. They'll give Brown a break here. Hooks comes in to be the running back. Two receivers on each side. They're stacked up one behind the other. Play clock down to seven. Third and about four for the Lenore Ryan offense. They need to get to their own 20. Play clock to two to one, the snap. Oh, the exchange is fumbled, fallen on by UNCP. Garrett Barnett was the first one to it. Braves ball. It was a bad snap to Keller. They tried to get it to the running back hooks on third down and the Braves will take over first and 10 at the Lenore Ryan 13 yard line. Huge play by the defense set up by a fantastic punt by Matt Davis. Braves fans, remember to tune in every Saturday morning, 9.30 a.m. on WFXB Fox TV for the UNCP Sports Black and Gold Report presented by Pepsi. It's a show all about UNC Pembroke Athletics. So we bring you interviews with coaches, highlights, and special features around the UNCP Athletic Department. Tune in Saturdays at 9.30 on WFXB Fox TV. First and 10 for UNCP as they start inside the red zone. Two receivers on each side. Snap to O'Brien, he's looking to throw. Lobs it to the left side, caught, touchdown UNCP. No wait, there it is, there's the signal. And the leaping catch made. I believe that's Quay Threet who hauled it in. They had Miles Grant in the backfield. He threw that last second block to buy an extra split second for Patrick O'Brien. And the Braves have finally scored. Matt Davis on to attempt the extra point. B.J. Bunn stays on to hold. 3.48 to go in the half. High snap. The kick is on its way. It's up and it is straight through. Matt Davis drills the extra point. And UNCP has the first points of the game. 7-0 Braves lead. Pass from Patrick O'Brien to Quay Threat. 13-yard touchdown pass. And it's 7-0 Braves. We'll be right back on the Braves Broadcast Network.
3.48 to go before halftime. The Braves have scored the first points. They turned a fumble by Lenore Ryan and went one play, 13 yards for a touchdown. The pass from Patrick O'Brien to Quay Threet. Threet has his first touchdown in a Braves uniform. The kickoff by Matt Davis goes out of the back of the end zone, and Lenore Ryan will take it back to the 25-yard line. Well, hey, it took Matt Davis a little while to warm up. His first punt went all of 10 yards. It had been a while until he'd kicked off, since he'd kicked off. Kicked off to start the game and hadn't had a field goal chance or a PAT attempt. Uh, but the setup for that last sequence was that Matt Davis had a 71-yard punt. Lenore Ryan faced third and four, fumbled the exchange, and the Braves took over and took the next play to the end zone on a long pass. Shouldn't say a long pass, a 13-yard pass, but a lob pass. So first and 10 for the Bears. They look to respond now. Snap to Keller. He rolls to his right, pump fakes, and now he'll try to run. No, dumps it off at the last second to his man. Has nearly enough for a first down. That was a great decision there to find his target. Jaquay Mitchell makes the catch, gains eight yards on the play. And that was a tough decision on the far side. I think that's Sean Everett over there in coverage. I think the Braves were in a zone, and Everett just had to make a decision. Do you go try to stop the quarterback and try to contain the run, or do you stay with the wide receiver and give up a three, four-yard run by the quarterback? Just a great decision by Keller at the last second to dump it off. Now they switch quarterbacks. It's Caleb Scott with running backs on each side. They give it back up the middle. And falling down near the first down marker. I don't think the ball ever got to the marker. It was Nelson Brown again. And they will give him the spot moving forward. First down, Lenore Ryan. He needed to get to the 35. He got the nose of the football to the 35-yard line, which means spotting for the next first down marker is very easy. They need to get it to the 45-yard line. First and 10 for Lenore Ryan. Braves up 7-0 with two and a half minutes to play before halftime. They give it to Brown again on the ground, cuts up field through the middle of the line, gets four yards as he runs back against the green. He's just been really good at picking up a couple yards at a time, but you worry about the workload for him as uh, the number's really starting to add up. For Brown, that was his 18th carry already today, and we're not yet to halftime. It takes him up over 50 yards. And it's second and six for the Bears offense. Two minutes to go before halftime. It's 7-0 UNCP. Snap goes to Scott, who throws high and incomplete to the left side. Incomplete. Tried to find number one, Omar Baker. But Sean Everett was right there. And that forced the throw to be a little bit high. So third down with the clock stopped. Each team does have two timeouts left. If Lenore Ryan runs the ball here and the Braves stop them short, they could call timeout and try to run their own little two-minute drill. Two receivers to the right, one to the left for the quarterback, Scott. Running backs on each side of him as he's in the shotgun. Snap, they give it to Brown off right side. Brown pushing forward. He's nowhere near the first down marker. Gain of a yard. And let's see if the Braves do call that timeout. Clock continues to run, a minute 45. And now Shane Richardson does call that timeout. So UNCP will be down to one timeout, but Lenore Ryan will be punting from their own side of the field. If the Braves can uh, field this cleanly, start to try to put something together and try to score again before halftime. A minute 42 left in the first half. It's UNCP 7, Lenore Ryan 0. We'll be right back. Some upcoming home events to mark down on your calendars, Braves fans. The women's soccer team will play the rescheduled match against Armstrong State on Monday evening. And next weekend is a busy one in Pembroke as volleyball plays at 7 p.m. versus Flagler and then again Saturday at noon versus Armstrong State. The UNCB football returns to Grace P. Johnson Stadium 
in a week for a game against fellow D2 independent Kentucky Wesleyan at 2 p.m. A full video broadcast will be available for that game on YouTube. Just search UNCP Braves. Motion along the line before this punt play. And Lenore Ryan sig signaling that it should be on UNCP. A minute 42 to go before halftime. The clock is stopped. And the Lenore Ryan punt unit comes off the field. Offsides on the Braves defense. They've handed the Bears a first down. And the clock stopped. So that's really a tough break. Really a costly error by UNCP special teams. So now the Bears get to try to continue a drive to score some points. It's 7-0 Braves with a minute 42. The Braves had got the stop on third down. They called timeout. They were ready to get the ball back and uh, you know start a little two-minute drill on offense. Now the Bears have it back. Two wide receivers, one on each side. Two tight ends there on the right side. Keller in the pistol. And the running back is Brown. They keep it on the ground with Brown. Dancing forward. Met in the backfield. And he is taken down by Carlos Manning right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. The Braves are really swarming to the ball, but it's pretty easy to do when Lenore Ryan has been pretty t transparent on what they're trying to do. They're going to run the ball, and they're going to try to run the ball some more. Uh, if you look at the play selection here, 26 running plays, 7 passing plays by Lenore Ryan. That would be one thing if it was pouring and it would have been hard to throw the ball you know, due to the storm, but really it's just dark skies, no rain in the forecast the rest of the way. High snap, now Keller will drop back to pass. Throws it deep over the middle, has a man caught at the 30, cutting up field to the 20. 15 tripped up at the 10-yard line is number 85, Ray Beam. The tight end right over the middle of the field, and he gets the Bears 45 yards on the pass. A minute left before halftime. The Bears looking to tie the game. 7-0 Braves lead. Spotted on the left hash for Lenore Ryan. They have first and goal to go. Keller in the diamond formation. They give it off right side for Brown. Brown met in the backfield. Drags Khalil Vance with him for a yard, but that's it. 42 seconds left. Now a whistle, and I believe Lenore Ryan will stop the clock here with a timeout. So a timeout on the field. We'll take it as well. Back in just a moment, you're listening to UNCP Braves football. UNCP leading Lenore Ryan in this one, 7-0 with 42 seconds left, but the Bears threatening. Adidas is the official apparel sponsor for all 17 of UNC Pembroke's varsity athletic teams. Adidas provides some of the most innovative products in the shoe and apparel industry and is one of the most recognizable brands worldwide. UNCP thanks Adidas for all of their support and offering the best for Braves athletes. UNCP wearing their white jerseys, black pants, and black helmets. They'll face this Lenore Ryan offense. Second and goal for Lenore Ryan, who's wearing crimson helmets, crimson jerseys, and black pants. Second and goal for the Bears. 42 seconds left before halftime. Braves up 7-0. Empty backfield for the quarterback, Keller. Drops back to pass. Before they can get this play off, there's some whistles. I don't see a flag, however. We'll see what the call is. It is a false start on the offense. And that's on the wide receiver, Alec Philpot who I believe was lined up on the near side. A little tough to see from my vantage point all the way that near corner. It's this Lenore Ryan offense now backs up to their to the 14-yard line. It'll be second and goal, and the running back, Nelson Brown, comes back into this formation. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They'll roll the pocket to the left. On the run, the throw, caught in the end zone, the foot down, touchdown, Bears. Jaquay Mitchell. The freshman from Bailey, North Carolina, has his first career touchdown grab. And the Bears are an extra point away from tying this game. 35 seconds left before halftime. 
And uh, tell you what, if I'm Coach Shane Richardson, I'm lighting in to the Braves in the halftime locker room. There have been so many mistakes by UNCP. A costly fumble, uh, a costly penalty, as there's a whistle before this PAT. It did go through, but a flag on the play is probably a false start. Not to say that Lenore Ryan has been perfect either, but the Braves' mistakes have seemed to really hurt them here this afternoon. It is a false start on the offense. So they will try the extra point again. Kicker, by the way, for Lenore Ryan. First time he's been out here is number 48, Hunter Hare, a junior and a transfer from Wake Forest. Five of seven on field goal attempts this year, eight of eight on point afters. This will be five yards deeper than an usual point after. This time the snap, the kick, and the point after is good. And with 35 seconds left in the first half, Lenore Ryan has tied this game. It's 7-7, and we'll be right back. Hunter Hare will kick off for Lenore Ryan as the Braves have seen their 7-0 lead go right back to even. B.J. Bunn and Quay Threat back deep to return for UNCP. Remember, Lenore Ryan did start with the ball, so the Braves will get the ball to start the second half. And the Braves have been good as a second half team this year. They've had to come from behind multiple times this season including wins against Winston-Salem State in week one when they trailed 17-0. Also trailed against Fayetteville State and Shaw before the last two games. They've been more of a first-half team. Had a little bit of a delay there as the wind knocked over the football before Hunter Hare could kick off. It is a windy day, but just cloudy, and this will be a short pooch kick as they'll try to keep it away from B.J. Bunn. The kickoff bounces out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. That's a penalty. And the Braves will be in a position to think about taking a couple shots and then maybe kicking a field goal. Remember, Matt Davis, uh, I don't know what he's been uh, eating for breakfast. Last couple weeks, he's just really had a strong leg. He kicked a 52-yard field goal last week, also had a 69-yard punt, and then he one-upped himself, or I should say two-upped himself with a 71-yard punt earlier today. So the Braves will take over the 35-yard line following the kickoff out of bounds. 35 seconds left, and they don't need to move too deep into Lenore Ryan territory to get into Matt Davis' field goal range. Getting to about the 30 would be enough. See what the target is, as the Braves do have one timeout remaining. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Shotgun formation for Patrick O'Brien. He's got Miles Grant to his right. Drops back to pass. Four-man rush. Throws complete to Bunn on the right side. And Bunn gets out of bounds. Enough for a first down. An 11-yard catch for B.J. Bunn. That stops the clock. The chains will move, and the Braves do get first and 10 from their own 46-yard line. Exactly 11 yards. That's just how you draw it up. O'Brien to Bunn. They're roommates, and they really make a lot of things happen in the passing game. Another four-man rush for Lenore Ryan. This time they throw right again, complete to Chandler. Chandler hit and taken down. Looks to be enough for a first down. Looks like another 11-yard gain. Trey Chandler making a catch. First and 10. The clock now runs as they weren't able to get out of bounds on the play. O'Brien drops back to pass, throws the middle. Oh, had Chandler incomplete. And that throw is a little bit behind him. He would have had it at about the 20-yard line over the middle. But that does stop the clock. 15 seconds left before halftime. A lot of time running in between those plays. But the Braves do still have a timeout. The decision now being, do you try to take a couple shots? It's second and 10 with the clock stopped. 15 seconds left. Tied at seven. Do you take a couple shots toward the end zone, or do you try to take uh, one more 11-yard gain, 
get in, into a field goal situation. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Ball spotted on the right hash as the Braves drive from left to right. Snap to O'Brien, steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle, complete to Grant, who's hit hard right near the line to gain. Clayton Horn patrolling the middle. Timeout taken by UNCP. Oh, no, they're not taking the timeout. Seven seconds. They'll say first down. O'Brien was ready to clock this ball. There's a whistle first. As they try to figure out whether that was a first down or not. I saw conflicting signals from the officials. Lenore Ryan went to pick the ball up because O'Brien, when he spiked the ball, he threw it backwards. And that fires up the home crowd. So the Braves did burn that timeout. Two seconds ran off. Now the question should be, uh, well, since the clock did stop, it had to be a, a first down. So there's five seconds left, and the ball is spotted on the 32-yard line. We'll keep it here as the Braves decide what to do. I think they'll probably just kick a field goal from here. It would be about a 49-yarder for Matt Davis. So this is within his range, but it is windy, or it has been windy today. If you look at the flags right now on the goalpost, they're not that active. So what well, looked like it was going to be a big storm uh, appears to be just a little bit of wind. Offense, excuse me, the special teams comes back out onto the field. Braves will try to get three points here before the end of the first half. It's 7-7. Braves don't have any more timeouts. Lenore Ryan does have a timeout if they want to try to ice Matt Davis before this kick. Ball spotted on the right hash at the 32-yard line of Lenore Ryan. VJ Bunn set up to hold. This will be a 49-yard field goal from the right hash for Matt Davis. On the season, he's 11 of 12 for field goals and a long of 52 yards. Bears lined up to come after this kick. 49-yard field goal attempt on the way. Whistle first, and it looks like Lenore Ryan will take that timeout. Timeout taken by Coach Mike Keller, the first-year head coach for Lenore Ryan. And got to say, I disagree with this one on a, for a couple of reasons. One is it really interrupts the flow of the game. I know we're getting to halftime anyway. It makes the game difficult to watch, blah, blah, blah. Two is that there's not really that much evidence that icing the kicker really works, especially against uh, experienced kickers like Matt Davis. And third, now Lenore Ryan is out of timeout, so they can't ice the kicker again. What I have seen work, and this is more anecdotal than anything, is when a coach has multiple timeouts, you use all but one of them and then when there's one timeout left and you could be icing the kicker, you don't ice the kicker there because the kicker in the back of his mind is thinking they're probably going to call a timeout here. This kick might not count. He's just wondering the whole time. Now there's no wondering. Matt Davis knows that he can't possibly get uh, iced here. There's not going to be a timeout. It's just a regular field goal attempt. Granted, it's a 49-yard field goal attempt as the first half comes to a close. Tied at seven. Snap to Bunn. The kick on its way. End over end. It's up. And it is good. Matt Davis, a 49-yard field goal at the end of the first half. But Davis is down at the 40-yard line. He got hit on the follow-through there. There was no flag. And Matt Davis is holding his right leg. This is bad news for UNCP. Davis will look to stretch himself out. The Braves will go to the locker room up 10-7. But this is a Braves team that should be fired up right now because there was no flag on that play. They also should be fired up because... Well, frankly, they didn't play all that well in the first half. But it's halftime. The Braves do have the lead, trying to spoil the homecoming for Lenore Ryan. It's 10-7 UNCP as Davis gets back to his feet. He'll walk a little gingerly back to the locker room. Halftime score one more time. UNCP 10, Lenore Ryan 7 on the Braves Broadcast Network.
All right, Braves fans, it's halftime in Hickory, North Carolina. We're at Moritz Stadium on the campus of Lenore Rhine University. The number 24 UNCP Braves coming in with that 4 and 1 record, taking on the 2 and 3 Lenore Rhine Bears. A scoreless first quarter, and then at halftime, the Braves have a 10 to 7 lead. They scored a touchdown late on a pass from Patrick O'Brien to Trey Chandler. 13 yards following a fumble recovered by UNCP. Lenore Ryan then took the ensuing kickoff, drove the length of the field, scored to tie the game to make it 7-7. And then Matt Davis with time winding down, a last second field goal to end the first half. A 49 yarder at that to give the Braves the 10-7 lead at halftime. Couple notes for UNCP. Braves fans, season tickets for the 2016-17 home basketball season are on sale now and premium chair back seats for the Peach Belt Conference's most electric environment can be purchased for as little as $70. This season's package includes 14 men's games and 13 women's games and can be purchased by calling 910-521-6361 or visiting uncpbraves.com slash tickets. Don't miss out on your chance to receive awards for ascending UNCP home athletic events during the 2016-17 season. Visit the App Store on your smartphone and visit or and download hashtag Brave Nation, UNCP's new fan engagement app. The app can be found on the Apple Store or on Google Play. Search hashtag Brave Nation. Remember to tune in every Saturday morning at 9.30 on WFXB Fox TV for the UNCP Sports Black and Gold Report presented by Pepsi. It's a show all about UNC Pembroke Athletics as we bring you interviews with coaches, highlights, and special features around the UNCP Athletic Department. Tune in Saturdays at 9.30 on WFXB Fox TV. Cameron Songer here with you at Lenore Rhine. Halftime as the Braves have a 10-7 lead. Let's take a look at the halftime stats. It has not been a particularly pretty day if you're a fan of offense as Lenore Ryan actually has outgained the, uh, the Braves 146 to 138 and they've done it in completely different manners. The Braves have attempted twice as many passes as Lenore Ryan, 18 to 9, but on the ground Lenore Ryan has carried it 27 times for 65 yards. The Braves eight carries for 17 yards, so the Bears have really been playing that smash mouth football, stopping the Braves run game and establishing a run game of their own. Meanwhile, the Braves have 121 yards through the air. Lenore Ryan with 81, but a lot of those coming on just one pass, a 44-yarder to tight end Ray Beam. Gerard Keller and Caleb Scott have been alternating at quarterback for Lenore Ryan. Keller 7 of 7 for 81 yards and a touchdown. Scott 0 of 2. And uh, the story of Lenore Ryan's offense, though, 21 carries, 58 yards for Nelson Brown. That's just 2.8 yards per carry and a long of 9. He's a guy who's averaging 5.4 yards per carry and up over 100 yards per game. He won Conference Player of the Week in the South Atlantic Conference last week after rushing for 200 yards in a 2017 win at Carson Newman. Remember, the Braves coming off a loss, 21-16 at Tuskegee. That was a matchup of unbeaten and ranked teams, and the Braves just came up a little short in the fourth quarter of that one. Speaking of the Braves, let's take a look at what they've done on offense. Rontonio Stanley, five carries, seven yards. Dylan Davis, one carry, six yards. I think that's actually a statistical error. Josh Sheridan, I think, was the carrier on that play. And Miles Grant, two carries, four yards. The Braves have had much more success through the air. 11 of 18 passing for Patrick O'Brien, 121 yards. One touchdown, no interceptions. Trey Chandler, the leading receiver, four catches for 39 yards. B.J. Bunn has two catches for 28 yards. Taron Huffman has a 27-yard catch. And Quay Threet has a 13-yard touchdown catch. Matt Davis, he's been hot and cold in terms of punting the ball. Had uh, one not-so-good-looking punt early in the game. And then also had a 71-yarder. He's punted four times for an average of 43.2 yards. His counterpart, Michael DeStephens, for Lenore Ryan, four punts for an average of 49.5, but a long of just 56. If you like punting, it's been a pretty good game for you. Uh, but I think most fans would like to see a little bit more offense. Uh, both teams getting up over, you know, the 150-yard mark and a half. It's usually 150 yards and a half in terms of total offense is just not that great. And uh, both teams will be looking to spread the field out a little bit more, open things up, open up the playbook, get a little bit more creative, and do some different things. 
Uh, defensive leaders, Elijah Williams leads the Brave with six tackles. Aris Brooks has five. And Singleton for Lenore Ryan has eight total tackles to lead the Bears. C.J. Cody also has five tackles. A quick recap one more time of the scoring plays in this one. Quay three, a 13-yard touchdown pass from Patrick O'Brien came with 348 left in the first half. Lenore Ryan then responded with their own nine-play, 75-yard drive right after that score and finished with a Jaquay Mitchell 13-yard touchdown pass. So each team has a 13-yard touchdown pass. The Braves put one more drive together, a little two-minute drill. Well, not really a two-minute drill, a 35-second drill. They went five plays, 33 yards, set up a Matt Davis 49-yard field goal as time expired in the first half. Start of the second half coming up in just a moment on the Braves Broadcast Network. Welcome back to Moritz Stadium on the campus of Lenore Rhine University. I'm Cameron Songer on the Braves Broadcast Network. Start of the third quarter as the Bears will kick off B.J. Bunn and Trey Chandler back deep to return for the Braves on this kickoff by Hunter Hare. It's been a pretty evenly matched contest so far. The Braves just able to put one more scoring drive together to end the first half. Chandler makes the catch at his own five-yard line, gets up to the 20, gets hit hard. The ball might have come out at the end of that play. Bear signaling that they have it. Let's see who fell on that football. Maybe Chandler was down, but he landed very awkwardly. Kind of fell backwards on his rear end and kind of got rolled up. We'll see if he's able to get up. He lost his helmet on the play. And it is the Bears defense coming out onto the field, which means that the Braves either fell on it or there was no fumble called at the end of that play. Either way, not much there on the return for Trey Chandler. Braves will take over at their own 20-yard line on the left hash, going from right to left across the field. Braves wearing their white jerseys, black pants, and black helmets. Lenore Ryan, maroon helmets, maroon jerseys with white numbers, and black pants. Under cloudy skies, some winds picking up here in Hickory, North Carolina. The lights are on. Homecoming in Hickory, North Carolina on the campus of Lenore Ryan. Patrick O'Brien leads the Braves offense back out onto the field. Gets the shotgun snap, throws to the near side, complete to Bunn, spins through a tackle, taken down to about the 26-yard line. He had a man hanging all over him there and still was able to hang on for the catch. Good coverage there by Isaiah Herring with help from the linebacker Rodney Singleton. It's a gain of six on the comeback route to B.J. Bunn, the Braves' top receiver this year. A little bit of a quiet first half for Bunn as he had just two catches for 28 yards. Second and four for the Braves. We've played just 30 seconds here in the second half. Braves up 10-7. Snap to O'Brien, four-man rush. He has time. Now he needs to rush. Tucks and goes to the right side, dumps it off, complete to Bunn. Bunn breaks a tackle across the 40, cuts back towards the middle. He's taken down at the 45-yard line. That was kind of a broken play throughout, and O'Brien and Bunn hook up again for a first down for UNCP. Bunn. Took a pretty big shot at the end of that one. He takes himself out of the game. Wants to catch his breath. And the Braves will figure out what they're doing here. Rontonio Stanley is the running back. And the Braves have too many receivers on the field. Taron Huffman finally trots out. It's two receivers to the right, two to the left. And Rontonio Stanley in the shotgun formation with O'Brien. Ball spotted on the Braves' 46-yard line as they drive closer to midfield from right to left. O'Brien gets the shotgun snap, has time, throws to the right, looking for Stedman. Rush led him a little bit too far out of bounds as he's not able to make the catch incomplete. The clock stops. 13.34 to go in the third quarter. Braves still leading 10-7. And it'll be second and 10 for UNCP. 
in that first half, the Braves really leaned on the passing game an awful lot. They net 121 yards through the air and just 17 yards on the ground. Perhaps looking to be a little bit more balanced here in the second half. Fullback Dylan Davis comes in. He's on the left side of this formation. Pistol for O'Brien, gets the snap, gives it up the middle for Stanley, now bounces it to the near side. Gets loose along the near sideline. He's out of bounds into Bears territory. Gets pushed out of bounds and a flag flies late. Stanley stayed on his feet as he went spiraling into the Bears players all along the sideline. Pretty much no doubt a late hit out of bounds. And that'll be 15 yards against Lenore Ryan. A costly penalty by the Bears. That's the one you just can't have. Cornerback Isaiah Herring pleading his case with the linesman who made that call. Perhaps also trying to <laughs> tell his coach that that wasn't really a late hit. Coach, please don't take me out of the game. Please don't make me run sprints. I'm sorry. But it's a 15-yard penalty. The Braves pick up an automatic first down, and now they're getting pretty deep into Lenore Ryan territory. Penalties, neither team really had a particularly clean sheet in the first half. Braves had four penalties for 30 yards. Lenore Ryan with six penalties for 35 yards. And that's the first personal foul we've seen for either side. First and 10 for UNCP. Blitz comes. O'Brien needs to get rid of it. Throws it to the left. Has Bun. Spun out of bounds near the 20-yard line, but he did get the foot down in bounds, and that should be enough for a first down. Braves just rolling down the field now. That's a 12-yard gain for B.J. Bunn, his already third catch this drive. Remember, he had just two in the entire first half. 13 minutes to go in the third quarter. Braves up 10-7. And they are right at the edge of the red zone right now. Spotted on the Lenore Ryan 21-yard line. Ball in the left hash. Bunn alone in this left side of this formation. Three receivers to the right. Stanley on the left side of O'Brien, who's in the shotgun. Four down linemen for the Bears. Play clock down to 10. Plenty of time. First down snap to O'Brien. Fakes the pass to his left. Now finds Bunn. No, incomplete. That was a pump and go looking for B.J. Bunn. And there was not that big of a window to throw it to. And O'Brien just... Let it sail a little bit. I think that's probably just an unintentional throwaway kind of thing. So the clock is stopped, and the Braves able to rotate some more personnel in and out. Stanley will get a breather, and the Braves go empty. No running backs now. Aaron Whitaker is, a er, is one of the two receivers on the left side of this formation. Him and John Allen on the left. Three receivers to the right of O'Brien, but B.J. Bunn is not on the field right now. O'Brien gets the snap, four-man rush, throws over the middle to Huffman, who dropped it incomplete. And that brings up third and ten. Braves well within field goal range for Matt Davis, who's already one for one today with a 49-yard field goal. Last week he hit a 52-yarder, and his earlier field goal today from 49 probably would have been good from 55-plus. But I think the Braves, the way they've been cruising on this drive, want to score a touchdown. Might have to settle for three. They'll stay in the empty formation. Play clock at 15. 12.35 left in the third quarter. It's still a 10-7 UNCP lead. Braves have the opening possession of the second half, and they've taken it almost the length of the field. Play clock down to three. Empty backfield. O'Brien with the snap. Throws it over the middle. Dropped by Huffman. Again, Taron Huffman just can't hang on to the ball. It's the third time today that he's been a pass that's hit him in the hands, and he hasn't been able to hang on. So the field goal unit comes out. It is Matt Davis who will attempt this field goal. He was hit at the end of the field goal at, to end the first half. He was down on the turf for about 45 seconds after the kick was ruled good and time expired in the first half. But he looks to be good. He was looking pretty good in warm-ups at halftime. Snap. The kick on its way by Davis. It's up, and it is good. And with 12.25 to go in the third quarter, the Braves score on the opening possession of the third quarter. And they take a 13-7 lead over Lenore Ryan. We'll be right back on the Braves Broadcast Network.
Matt Davis kicks off for UNCP. Braves with a 13 to seven lead. Back deep to return for the Bears. Logtharp and Williams. And this will be the first possession of the second half for Lenore Ryan. Pretty good crowd on hand at Moritz Stadium. It seats 8,500, it's nowhere near capacity. And this is a very high kick from Davis. It'll be fielded right at the goal line by Lotharp. Lotharp takes it to the 15 and he is lit up. Braves finish the tackle well. Bekembe Kearney cleans it up after the initial contact made by Cody Gardner. So it's first and 10 for Lenore Ryan and they'll start from their own 18 yard line. Not very good starting field position. Really with the way Matt Davis has been kicking off, he doesn't have to try to boot it out of the back of the end zone. He can try to kick it high. You've seen that actually a little bit in the NFL this year when they decided they were gonna move kickoffs up. The goal was to try to uh, increase the number of touchbacks, but what you've seen these professional kickers do is kick it higher and force other teams to try returns with the coverage team coming up a little bit more. That's what the Braves have done. High snap, they give it up the middle to Brown. Brown spins off a tackle, gets to about the 21 yard line. Gain of about six or five on the run by Nelson Brown. He has had a very, very busy day. That was his 22nd carry and his first of the second half. So I'll let you do the math there. He toted the rock 21 times for 58 yards in the first half. And to call him a workhorse might be an understatement. Cameron Williams made the tackle there, second and five for the Bears. Running backs on either side of Gerard Keller. And two receivers, one on each side. There's also a tight end in this formation. Four down linemen for the Braves. 11 and a half minutes to go. They sweep it to the left side, looking for room for Brown. Breaks a tackle, but he's stuck in the backfield and nowhere to go. Loss of about three on the play. Spun away from one, but the rest of the Braves all got to him and just really kept him from finding any room to operate there in the backfield. So it's third and eight and probably an obvious passing situation here for the Bears. Something they kind of struggled with in the first half. They did have 81 passing yards. That's a little deceptive as 44 of those yards came on one play. So I know coaches like to say all the time, you take away one or two plays and blah, blah, blah. But and the, the, the joke about that is, of course, you take away the plays where the other team scored and we shut them out. But... Lenore Ryan needs to throw here. They throw over the middle complete and room to go. Enough for a first down as they cleared out everything. And Alec Philpot just came through on a drag route. Everybody else ran deep. They threw it short over the middle and let, uh, excuse me, Mitchell pick up the yards after the catch. First down, Lenore Ryan with 10.38 to go in the third quarter. Lenore Ryan didn't have a lot of first downs in the first half, just six of them. So to see them get one on their first possession of the third quarter is an encouraging sign if you're a Bears fan. 13-7 UNCP leads. Quarterback, the redshirt freshman Gerard Keller looks to the sideline, gets the play call. Shotgun formation, he's got the running back. Looks like Hooks to his left. They give it to Hooks. No, it's a play fake. Hit as he throws, lobs it along the near side. Thomas Quick turns, looks for the ball, knocked away, incomplete. Philpot. Actually did make the catch along the sideline, but his foot was out of bounds. Boy, that was a dying duck. Matt Thomas Quick just a little slow to turn his head around. Blitz came and Keller took a big hit right in his rib cage. Keller will come off. Let's see what the Bears decide to do offensively. Quarterback Caleb Scott comes in, huddles up the team. Not a lot of time here for Lenore Ryan. It's, looks like they switched out I would say more than half of their offense. Play clock at eight as they break the huddle. Running backs on each side of Scott. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They keep it on the ground as they give it to Brown. Brown pushing forward. And there's a big pile as he stays on his feet. Finally knocked down at about the 34 yard line. Gain of three for Lenore Ryan. There's a Braves player who's shaken up on the play. That's number 26, Tyler Threet who doesn't seem to be bearing any weight on that right leg right now. So that's a bad sign for UNCP. He's just trying to make his way over to the sideline uh, without this being a serious stoppage. 
but they'll finally bring the training staff out onto the field. So while Tyler Threek gets looked at by the medical staff, we'll step aside. Third, er, third down coming up for Lenore Ryan when we come back. Braves fans, ever wondered why our sponsor, Lumberton Chevrolet Buick Cadillac GMC, has such a long name? One reason is the tremendous variety of cars and trucks they offer to meet every need. Great looking Chevrolets, Buicks, Cadillacs, and even GMC SUVs and trucks. They have everything from budget vehicles to top of the line Cadillacs. So why would you shop anywhere else? Try their quick lube and while your vehicle is being serviced, you can see for yourself. That's Lumberton Chevrolet Buick Cadillac GMC, located next to Lumberton High School. Third down. And we'll say seven for Lenore Ryan. Ball on their own 35-yard line. A chance for Code Black to get off the field. Snap, pressured, for forced out. And now throwing it away is Scott. That was Lyles, Tajai Lyles, who got loose in the backfield. Chased the quarterback all the way to the sideline. And he just had to get rid of it. Threw it out of bounds. And that will bring out the punting unit for Lenore Ryan. Now one time last quarter... It was fourth and four. The Braves thought they had gotten a stop and were ready to get the ball back, but they were called offsides on a punt play. Fourth and four, they got the automatic first down. This time, even an offsides wouldn't help Lenore Ryan. The punt is away from Michael DeStephens. They kick it away from Bunn, who tra tracks it down at the 15-yard line. He runs backwards, breaks a tackle. Now a flag comes in. Bunn all the way down at the five-yard line, breaks another tackle, but he's out of bounds at the four-yard line. Flag on the play. And then another flag near the 20. So that play went from bad to worse for UNCP. No matter how you look at this, the Braves will be starting from inside their own 10. P.J. Bunn would have been better served to just let that bounce, and chances are it would have either gone into the end zone or straight out of bounds, or maybe even bounced forward as he caught that at the 15. Broke a couple tackles, but ended up 11 yards backwards. Certainly something the Braves coaching staff has, has talked with B.J. Bunn about is get this play call, or the penalty call. And it's a illegal block in the back by UNCP. And the Braves will be spotted at the one-yard line. So the Braves working from their own one-yard line. They take over first and ten with just under nine minutes to play in the third quarter. Lenore Ryan will be thinking about bringing the house to try to force a safety. O'Brien in the pistol, gives it up the middle for Stanley. Stanley gets back forward to the five, but a flag flies, and then another flag, and then another flag. So Stanley gets about five yards on the carry, but there might have been some holding going on, and you know, if you're a Braves offensive lineman, you see the ball spot at the one yard line. Oh, it's a face mask on Lenore Ryan. That's huge. 15 yards from the end of the run, an automatic first down. And just like that, the Braves are no longer in danger of getting tackled in their own end zone. Wow. That's the second personal foul on Lenore Ryan this half after they had, again, just a couple penalties in that, in that first half. Six for 35 yards. So not costly penalties by the Bears. One of them was a delay of game that they took on purpose. First and 10 for UNCP at their own 21-yard line. Shotgun formation, O'Brien with two receivers on each side. They keep it on the ground with Stanley, who has a huge hole right up the middle. 30, 40, and there is no one in front of him. To the 40, 30, 20, Rontonio Stanley to the house. 79 yards, touchdown Braves. How about that? Just a gaping hole opened up by the offensive line. Shout out all of them. Lawrence Keyes, Jaden Funderburg, Chris Hassard, Demarcus Whitehurst, and Daniel Butler, the Braves' starting offensive line. It's now 19-7 UNCP with the extra point pending. Boy, once he got to the second level, Rontonio Stanley shifted into an extra gear, and there was no one in a red shirt catching him. Extra point by Matt Davis is up and good. And with 8-19 to play in the third quarter, the Braves creating some distance. It's 20-17 UNCP.
Matt Davis to kick off for UNCP. Back deep to return, P.J. Lotharp and Aaron Farmer for the Bears. And just like that, the Braves have really changed the complexion of this game. They were starting at their own one-yard line. There was a 15-yard face mask on Lenore Ryan after a five-yard run by Rontonio Stanley. Then the Braves gave it to Stanley again, and he just took it 79 yards to the end zone for a touchdown. His third touchdown run of the year, by the way. He had eight last season. And uh, now the Braves up by 13 points. This is starting to look like what we expected to see out of UNCP. They came in as the ranked team. Now Matt Davis still trying to get this kickoff away. Twice now the wind has blown it over. And usually when that happens, the ref says someone has to hold this ball so we're not here all afternoon. That'll put the kicking team at a little bit of a disadvantage. And uh, not something the Braves are used to. They are, they're all looking around, and I think that was a, a nose-goes. You know, you have to hold the ball. No, you have to hold the ball. And they finally look to head coach Shane Richardson, who calls on Trey Chandler to, uh, to hold the ball for Matt Davis' kickoff. Fortunately for the Braves, Matt Davis has kicked off so well today that the chance of this actually being returned by Lenore Ryan uh, is a little bit lower. But they'll be kind of short a guy as this kickoff does get fielded about five yards deep, Lotharp. and it'll be downed by Lotharp. Also want to correct myself there. That was Joshua Barrett who was holding the all-important uh, the all-important kicker, kick holder role there on the windy kickoff. So 8-19 to go for Lenore Ryan in the third quarter. They're down 20 to 7 and looking to create some offense here after uh, the Braves kind of have taken, I'm not going to say control of this game, but they've really laid a claim to taking control of this game. Comparing the teams now, Braves with well over 200 yards of total offense. Lenore Ryan still at 164. And the quarterback is Keller. And they set up the reverse, coming back to the near side, breaking a tackle, Lotharp along the near side. He's pushed out of bounds by Elijah Williams. And he gets just two yards. A lot of east-west running and just a two-yard gain for the Lenore Ryan offense. Lenore Ryan, Keller comes to the sideline, gets his play call. Now trots back out, calls the play. And Lenore Ryan breaks the huddle with 20 on the play clock. Just under eight minutes to go in the third quarter and starting to get a little brighter out here as the sun peeking through some clouds. It's been cloudy all day here in Hickory, North Carolina. Bears driving from left to right as Keller has time. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, dumps it off short, complete for a gain of just two or three yards. Number 89, Jaque Mitchell making the catch. This will be third and long again for Lenore Ryan. The Braves' defense has stepped up big time. And you take away, again, that special team's penalty that allowed Lenore Ryan to continue their drive. Code Black wouldn't have allowed any points. Mitchell does have the only touchdown grab of the day for Lenore Ryan. And the Bears line up again. They put two receivers on each side. They're stacked up one behind the other. They like to run screens out of this formation. Third and seven. And they set up another screen. Near side complete to Lotharp. He's tripped up and taken down short of the 30. Shaking his head. No way, says Tyler Hinton. He scooted off the line. Got free into uh, the flat. And made the tackle. Lotharp is shaken up. He's helped off by the trainer. But didn't have to go very far. Maybe about two yards away from the sideline. And that drive netted just about nothing for Lenore Ryan. Just four yards in the three plays. And back comes the punting unit. Michael DeStephens on to punt. John Allen will be the returner for UNCP after B.J. Bunn took that last punt return for uh, an 11-yard loss. It was a very pretty 11-yard loss, but he did run 11 yards backwards. So it's John Allen back deep to return. Now a whistle flag before the play. And if this is a false start... The Braves can exhale, and that's what it was. A couple times the Braves have been uh, offsides on punt plays as they try to come after it. Line of scrimmage is the 24-yard line, so the punter to Steffens is standing at his own 10. The snap to him, he gets the kick away, spiraling to Allen, who makes the catch at the 35-yard line. Then he's hit, and that draws a flag. Running into him was the coverage man. It looked like number 19, Landon Scott, in coverage. 
And he just knocked over John Allen. He didn't mean to. He tried to slow up, but not nearly close enough to slowing up. So Allen fielded the punt at the 35-yard line. That should be kick, catch, interference and 15 yards. And the Braves are in business again. I said 18, Victor Brand. I couldn't tell if that's an 18 or a 19 as the jersey numbers bunch up. Either way, it's one of the young guys who's uh, playing kick coverage for Lenore Ryan. And the Braves take over at midfield. Empty backfield as O'Brien is in the shotgun. They'll motion Chandler across the formation and shovel it to him. Chandler trying to get free along the far sideline. Breaks a tackle, stays on his feet to the 45. He's hit hard out of bounds. Boy, Lenore Ryan flying to the ball, but they need to be careful about some of these. They've already been called for a face mask, a late hit out of bounds, and a kick catch interference. That's all just in the third quarter, and we haven't even played 10 minutes in this quarter yet. Chandler a little shaken up, so he'll stay on the sidelines as he got knocked into the Braves bench. Second down and five for UNCP. 6.15 to go in the third quarter. Braves up 20 to seven. Pistol formation, O'Brien gives it up the middle for Stanley. Stanley breaks three again. He's at the 30, 20, 15, 10. No one catches him. Rontonio Stanley again. Touchdown, Braves. 26 to seven, UNCP. Extra point pending. How about that? Two carries, two touchdowns for Rontonio Stanley. He's having himself quite an afternoon. Six minutes to go in the third quarter. Braves can go up by 20. And how about this? The offense comes back out. They want to go up by 21. They've done the math. They said a 20-point lead doesn't help us that much. And we don't mind having a 19-point lead if we don't get it. So the offense onto the field to attempt a two-point conversion with six minutes to go in the third quarter. It's 26-7. Miles Grant comes in. He is the running back. Pistol formation for O'Brien with Dylan Davis to the right side of this formation. They set up a lob going to the left side for Bunn, makes the catch, but his foot was not down. Oh, two officials right there. One foot looked like it was down. The question was whether the other foot came down out of bounds first. They say no good, and the two-point conversion fails. So with six minutes to go in the third quarter, UNCP gets six on that possession, and it's 26-7. to seven. Braves will be right back. Matt Davis will kick off again for UNCP. Six minutes to go in the third quarter. The Braves have really taken control of this one. Two straight touchdown runs by Rontonio Stanley. One of them from 79 yards. The other one, uh, not quite as long. See if I can get you an official number on that. But uh, still pretty good. About 50 yards, and Stanley's having himself quite a day. This time the wind cooperates, allows Matt Davis to kick it off. It's a, another deep kick. We fielded it about two yards deep by number eight, Aaron Farmer, who breaks a tackle on the near side and then gets taken down as he tries to cut it back to the far side, and he gets taken down short of the 10-yard line. Josh Sheridan makes the tackle, and the Braves will force Lenore Ryan to go the length of the field. Bears take over, first and 10 at their own nine as they drive from left to right across their home field. John David Moosefield at Moritz Stadium on the campus of Lenore Ryan University. It's homecoming in Hickory, North Carolina, and the Braves have spoiled it so far. Not much of a celebration. The stadium's gotten pretty quiet here in the third quarter. The quarterback, Gerard Keller, 
Leads the troops back out there. He's in the shotgun. Two receivers to the near side. He rolls to his right. Now throws on the run. Has a man caught short of the 20, but nearly enough for a first down. Alec Philpot making the catch. He has the most receptions on the team coming into today's game, and he had 10 in the team's first five games. That tells you how much Lenore Ryan likes to throw the ball. And when they get down, they sometimes can struggle to, to come back if you don't have that really mature, established passing game. A team that averaged just 121 yards through the air in their first five games. Three receivers to the left, none to the right, as Keller's in the shotgun on second and one. Play fake, they throw it to the left side, complete again. That's Phil Pot again, and he has enough for the first down. Got about four yards as he slides to the ground. So a couple of quick throws from Keller to Philpot, and Lenore Ryan is getting out in front of the chains and moving them. First down and 10. 5.15 left in the third quarter. Braves 26, Bears 7. Number 24, UNCP looking to improve to 5-1. and one. The snap to Keller, drops back to pass, throws short complete over the middle to Omar Baker, who's wrapped up and tackled. That's Garrett Barnett, who read that pretty well. Call that a gain of just two on the play. Next UNCP football game next Saturday at home when the, when the Braves take on fellow D2 independent Kentucky Wesleyan and look to avenge a upset loss in Kentucky last year. Imagine that'll be a fired up Braves team and Kentucky Wesleyan's really struggled this year. So perhaps one the Braves might be overlooking. Throw over the middle complete and taken down near the first down marker is number 85 Ray Beam. And that is a first down. They will give him the forward progress just short of the 40-yard line. So to move the chains again, the Bears need to get to near midfield. But they seem to have some rhythm on this drive as they've been throwing the ball short a little bit and moving the ball. Keller gets the play call. He has two receivers to the left, one to the right, and a tight end in this formation. Braves come after him. Corner blitz. Everett misses the tackle. The throw complete and taken down for a gain of about five as they have their man, number five, Nelson Brown. Corner blitz, and Sean Everett just couldn't get the quarterback in his grasp. Gain of seven on the play. As the Braves continue to be in that 4-3 base defense. Bears change up their quarterback, though, after that hit on Keller. It's Caleb Scott back in to play QB. He's got a running back on each side of him on second down and three. Option keeper, and the Braves will get to him short of the first down marker, gain of just a yard, as Albert Wright was there on the tackle for UNCP. Third and a yard for Lenore Ryan. They need to get to their own 49, that's at their own 48. 3 12 to go in the third quarter. Braves up 26 to 7. This is starting to be kind of a must convert situation for Lenore Ryan. Give up the middle. First down yardage for Brown as he gets across midfield into Braves territory. He's taken down at the 46. It's a first down for Lenore Ryan. But you figure if the Braves can just keep the deep ball from Lenore Ryan and you force them to gain three, four yards at a time, quite frankly, there's not really enough time for them to get 19 more points. 2.45 to go in the third quarter. Still a lot of time left to play. But if the Braves' offense continues to execute the way it has, especially up front, they've been manhandling the Lenore Ryan defensive front. Antonio Stanley will have holes to run through. Dropping back to pass is Keller. Throws over the middle, incomplete off the hand of number 83, Patrick Rendleman. He tried a spectacular one-handed catch, but he couldn't haul it in. Clock stops, 2.29 left in the third quarter. Second down and 10 for the Bears. UNCP, the 24th ranked team in Division II football. They took a loss on the road at then number 11, Tuskegee. A game that the Braves led after three quarters. It was 16-0, but Tuskegee scored three touchdowns in the final stanza to win that game. Braves looking to come back. Ooh, corner blitz pass deflected on the blitz by number 20, Trayvon Gibson. He just came sailing in with two hands and Batted it down like he was trying to block a field goal. That pass incomplete. And it brings up a third and 10 for Lenore Ryan. 2.25 in the third quarter. 26-7 UNCP lead. 
Lenore Ryan has the ball on the right hash. Ball spotted at the UNCP 47 yard line. They need to get to the UNCP 37. Driving from left to right across their home field as the sun's starting to peek through some, some clouds just a little bit. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Snap goes to Keller. He's pressured, dumps it off short, complete to Brown over the middle. Now he stiff arms and has first down yardage as he gets past Carlos Manning for a first down. Manning was the one who finally tracked him down, but instead of squaring him up, he had to get him from behind, and that does move the chains for Lenore Ryan. They move it up to the Braves' 34-yard line with the clock running now, 2.10 to go in the third quarter. No matter how you slice, it's been a successful quarter for UNCP. Looking for the defense to make another stop. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. First and 10 for the Bears. Motion man across the formation is Mitchell. High snap, Keller leaps up, and now he's rolling to the right. He's still looking, throws short, and has a man caught at the 25-yard line. And now a flag near the middle of the field. That's in the area of potentially holding. If that play stands, it's about a nine-yard pass to Patrick Rendleman, but we'll have to see what the call is. An eligible receiver downfield on Lenore Ryan, so that play doesn't count. As one of the linemen got too far upfield. So the Braves catch a little bit of a break there. A bad snap, and Keller was kind of in panic mode from the beginning of that play. Didn't stay in the pocket at all. And so it's a five-yard penalty, first and 15 coming up for Lenore Ryan, who just, they've committed a lot of penalties here in the third quarter. Keller will be in the shotgun. Receivers bunched up one behind the other on each side of this formation. Two on the near side, two on the far side. Play clock at 12. Keller gets the shotgun snap. It's a delayed give to Brown, who's met near the line of scrimmage, finally taken down. Look like Nathan London there, the one to really hold on and do the brunt of the damage there as Brown stumbles forward for a gain of three. Second and 12 for Lenore Ryan. 1-17 left in the third quarter. Bears chasing 19 points. It's 26-7. But Lenore Ryan has sustained this drive from deep in their own territory into Braves territory, but they're not in field goal range just yet. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Shotgun formation. Snap to Keller. Steps up in the pocket, has time. Airs it out deep to the near sideline, looking for a man caught. Touchdown! Lenore Ryan Rendleman makes the catch over Trayvon Gibson, who never turned around. There's a flag on the play. But that'll be pass interference on UNCP's Trayvon Gibson, and he still couldn't stop the catch. Touchdown, Bears. Just straight man on man. Something that the Braves have tried once or twice in this game and haven't been able to hit on. This time, Lenore Ryan uh, able to decline this penalty and score a touchdown. 26 13 UNCP leads with the extra point pending. And on to attempt the extra point for Lenore Ryan, number 48, Hunter Hare. Snap is down, the kick is up, and it is good. And with 52 seconds left in the third quarter, it's still a two-score game, but Lenore Ryan showing signs of life again. It's 26-14 Braves, and we'll be right back. Aaron Huffman, Rontonio Stanley back deep to return for UNCP there. 52 seconds left in the third quarter. Hunter Hare will kick off for Lenore Ryan. A high kick along the near side. 
and it will bounce in the end zone. UNCP won't touch it. They'll take it back out to the 25-yard line. And it rolls to the a stop at the restraining wall behind the end zone. A very unique field situation here at Lenore Ryan, as the actual field itself is sunk about six or seven feet below uh, the lower level of the bleachers, and I would say at least 20 or 30 feet below uh, ground level on the rest of the campus and a horseshoe kind of seating scenario, although it's really only five or six rows deep in the end zone and along the far side with regular bleachers and the press box on this side where I am reporting from the home sideline. Pistol formation for O'Brien as the Braves offense back out onto the field. They give it to Miles Grant off right side. He dances forward, has a little bit of room across the 30 to about the 31. Gain of six for Miles Grant on that first down carry. Number nine, Sherrod Williams made the tackle. Redshirt freshman safety who won South Atlantic Conference Defensive Player of the Week a week ago in the win against Carson Newman. He does have an interception in 24 tackles this year. And the Braves with a 12-point lead as the third quarter winding down. Expect them to keep it on the ground here, and this will be the last play of the quarter. The option keep to O'Brien, who has enough for a first down as he's across the 35 to almost the 40-yard line. The Braves needed four on the run and got about nine. Eight and a half yard run by Patrick O'Brien gets the Braves first down yardage and that should be the final play of the third quarter. Clock winding down, 4-3. The Braves walk into the sidelines with four fingers up. The fourth quarter was the Braves' kryptonite a week ago. Can they hold on to this lead? 26-14 UNCP after three quarters. We'll be right back on the Braves Broadcast Network. Start of the fourth quarter at Mort Stadium on the campus of Lenore Rhine University. Homecoming for the Bears. Braves looking to spoil it, and they're in great position to do so. They have a 26-14 lead as we start the fourth quarter. On the Braves Broadcast Network, I'm Cameron Songer. Thank you so much for joining us. Shotgun formation, O'Brien has time to throw. Throws complete to the right side. Not a lot of room there for John Regis. He gets whacked right as he makes the catch. Braves kind of spread the field there. Made the catch. Excuse me, John Allen making the catch. Gain of three, second and seven on the completion to John Allen. Same formation now for UNCP. Two receivers to the right, to the left. Allen is awfully close to the line of scrimmage. Play fake, throw over the middle, complete. Huffman makes the catch into Bears territory. It's enough for a first down. We have the stats for you now through three quarters, and really the story of that third quarter. Big runs by UNCP. Rontonio Stanley, touchdown runs of 79 and 45 yards. And penalties by Lenore Ryan. They had just six for 35 yards through two quarters, and through three quarters they have 11 for 90 yards. So really some costly penalties. They cost themselves 55 yards with five penalties in that third quarter alone. Braves into Bears territory, first and ten with one minute off the clock in the fourth quarter. Give up the middle, as Miles Grant gets about two or three yards down to about the 42-yard line of Lenore Ryan. 26-14, the UNCP lead as the Braves, the 24th-ranked team in the country, try to improve to 5-1 and one with a win at the expense of Lenore Ryan, who's right now 2-3, and three, but 2-0 and oh in conference. So I don't know how much sleep they'll lose over a loss like this here today. Obviously, you'd like to win on your homecoming, but... A conference title also important for Lenore Ryan. This is not a conference game for them. O'Brien looking to the left, takes his never takes his eyes off of Bunn, who makes the catch at about the 30-yard line. What a play by B.J. Bunn to keep his foot down and make the catch. 
got to say, I thought O'Brien was trying to fake out the defense with his eyeballs as he was looking to the left the entire time. Then finally threw it to Bunn, who was able to make the catch once he had a little bit of separation from his man. First down, Braves. Clock rolls again. 13-10 to go in the ball game. Braves up by 12 and driving in Lenore Ryan territory. They're already in Matt Davis field goal range. He had a 52-yarder last week. That's about where this would be if the Braves don't move the ball forward at all. Snap to O'Brien, four-man rush. He's flushed out of the pocket, rolling to the right. Now he's backpedaling, throws incomplete. He tried to find Aaron Whitaker, but the pass a little bit behind him as Whitaker was heading to the sideline. O'Brien, before that pass, or we could say through three quarters, O'Brien, 15 of 26, 164 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Hasn't been a great day for him through the air. It's two weeks after a 300-plus yard game for UNCP through the air against North Greenville. The story so far for the Braves offense has been Rontonio Stanley, nine carries, 142 yards. This time it's a give up the middle for Grant, and he might have lost a yard there. Great push up front by the Lenore Ryan defense. That's a big number 99, Miles Braswell Sample into the bottom of that pile. I'll actually say a loss of two there for Miles Grant. And now third and 12 for UNCP. They've got a 12 point lead, but a field goal doesn't really help them all that much. But you also don't want to take a loss here and take yourselves out of field goal range. So a tough spot play calling for the Braves. 10 seconds on the play clock, 12-10 on the game clock. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. O'Brien in the shotgun with Miles Grant with him. Drops back to pass against a four-man rush. Throwing to the right side, incomplete through the hands of Huffman, through the hands of a Lenore Ryan defender who tried to dive and make a last second interception. Brings up a fourth down with exactly 12 minutes to go in the game. This will be a long field goal for Matt Davis as he comes out. We'll see who the holder is. It's not DJ Bunn. Oh, there he is. He was hiding behind Christopher Plotch. This will be a 50-yarder. Ball spotted just a little bit to the left of midfield. Bunn on to hold for Matt Davis's third field goal attempt today. This will be the longest he's tried all day. Snap, kick on its way. The Davis 50-yard field goal attempt is good. Matt Davis puts the Braves up 29-14 with 11.54 to go in the third quarter. We'll be back right after this. Matt Davis has had a very busy afternoon. He's now three of three kicking field goals. He's also punted for a UNCP. Four punts for an average of 43.2 yards. And uh, now three of three kicking field goals. He's had a 49 yarder, a 38 yarder, now a 50 yarder. Remember his long came, his career long came last week against Tuskegee, a 52 yarder. And before he kicks off, the ball is blown off the tee. Braves fans, Adidas is the official apparel sponsor for all 17 of UNC Pembroke's varsity athletic teams. Adidas provides some of the most innovative products in the shoe and apparel industry and one of the most recognizable brands worldwide. UNCP thanks Adidas for all of their support and offering the best for Braves athletes. So rather than mess around with the wind on the tee, Braves will just send number 25, Yavel Morris, to hold for this kickoff. Could potentially mean one fewer man in coverage if Davis doesn't crush this ball, but he crushes it, and it's taken all the way to the back of the end zone, and it'll be downed by Lenore Ryan for a touchback. First and 10 coming up for the Bears from their own 25-yard line, down by 15 points with 11.54 to go. 
I'm Cameron Songer on the Braves Broadcast Network. As a reminder, Braves fans, we've got UNCP Volleyball for you coming up on our video stream on YouTube. Search UNCP Braves. That'll be Friday night on Lumbee Guarantee Bank Court. The volleyball team picked up a big win last night on the road at St. Andrews. Not a long road trip, but a big road win nonetheless for UNCP. The volleyball team will also be in action a week from today at home in Pembroke. But we won't be streaming that for you because we'll be at football. UNCP football takes on Kentucky Wesleyan. That's a 2 p.m. kick a week from today. But the Braves have to finish this one first. They're up 29-14 over Lenore Rhine as the Bears offense comes back out. There was a five-yard penalty on UNCP there. So it'll be at the 30-yard line for Lenore Ryan. And got to figure, they got to start trying to air it out a little bit. Keller gets the shotgun snap, play fake, now rolling to the right. He's got some green grass in front of him, throws complete to Mitchell. Mitchell out of bounds near midfield. If he was able to keep his foot in bounds, he's into Braves territory. A big gain. Give him 24 yards on the pass and catch for freshman Jacque Mitchell, who already has his first career touchdown earlier in this game from the UNCP 47. So it was a 23-yard play for Lenore Ryan. Those are the kinds of plays they need. Kind of chunk yardage, try to get a lot of yards and a lot of points in the shortest amount of time possible. They motion Mitchell towards the line of scrimmage, then back out, now rolling, and they have Mitchell again taken down out of bounds about the 45-yard line. That was a flying tackle by Yavel Morris. Got to be careful about getting called for the horse collar there. Just a gain of two on the short pass to Jacque Mitchell. Well, he came in with just three catches on the season. He's been one of the primary targets here today. He had four catches in the first three quarters. Give him two more already on this drive. Just under 11 minutes to go in the ball game. Play fake. And this is a dump off past the tight end. Beam across the 40. Lowers the shoulder down near the 35-yard line. That's a first down for Lenore Ryan. Boy, that's a big tight end, 6'2", 215. He's tough to bring down. The Braves had trouble with it there, and Lenore Ryan able to pick up a first down, but Beam is shaken up as he limps off the field. And also coming off the field is Philpot, as it looks like Lenore Ryan tries to go big. They have two running backs, one on each side of Keller, and then the deep back is Nelson Brown. Brown has been busy, had 20 carries in the first half alone, actually 21. Play clock down to nine. Snap. They fake the run. Play fake. Time. Long ball. Looking to the near side. Incomplete. Great coverage by Sean Everett. He nearly ripped it away for an interception. Trying to go to Sahim Brooks, the freshman. Couldn't make the catch. Everett was with him step for step. And Sean Everett not going to give up a deep ball there. Lenore Ryan did have one deep ball touchdown. A 36-yard pass to Rendleman as he beat Trayvon Gibson in the end zone last quarter. That pass comes up empty. Second and 10 for Lenore Ryan from the UNCP 35. Fourth quarter, Braves up 15. Delayed give, Rhett in the backfield, and there's nowhere to go for Nelson Brown. That's a loss of a yard, maybe two. Nathan London, Khalil Vance combined to make that tackle for UNCP. It's third and 13 for Lenore Ryan, wow. Unfavorable spot that time. Under 10 minutes to play. Braves up 29-14. Couple more stops away from being able to put themselves in a position to ice this one away. Two receivers left, one to the right, and a tight end also on the left side of this formation as Keller is in the shotgun. High snap, Keller to it. Just a four-man rush. Throws complete to the left side, spinning back towards the middle. Baker, he's not able to get free. He's taken down short of the 30. They needed to get to the 25. It's fourth down for Lenore Ryan. Carlos Manning in coverage and on the tackle. And I think this is kind of obviously four down territory here for the Bears. The field goal doesn't help them that much. Down by 15 with nine minutes to play. They face fourth and five. Ball on the Braves 30 yard line. Pistol formation. One receiver on each side and a couple tight ends on the left. Now they motion them to the right. Now a wide receiver in motion from right to left. And the running back, Brown, goes into the right side. So it's an empty backfield for Keller. Play clock to five. Keller gets the snap, throws it to the right side. Incomplete, but there's a flag on the play in the area of holding. They tried to throw it to the tight end. Number 82, Mike Evans on the out route. Flag down at the line of scrimmage. This could determine the fate of this drive. 
Lenore Ryan offense is heading off the field. It is a hold on the Bears. The Braves will decline it. It's a turnover on downs. First and 10, UNCP, 8.46 to play. And the Braves lead 29-14. Antonio Stanley back into the game. He was out for that last sequence for the black and gold. Nice to see him back out there. Clouds starting to thin out to start to see some spots of blue in the sky. Lights still on at Moritz Stadium. The Braves driving from left to right across the field with a 15-point lead. They give it up the middle to Stanley. He's got both hands on the ball, kind of picking his spot. Picks forward for about two or three yards. Braves wearing black helmets, white jerseys with black numbers, and black pants. Lenore Ryan, crimson helmets, crimson jerseys with white numbers, and black pants. Second and eight after the game by Rontonio Stanley. Both teams still have all three timeouts. The Braves, I'd be surprised if they used one unless they were in a situation where the play clock ran down on them, but game plan's probably pretty simple for the black and gold right now. Keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock running. Don't let Lenore Ryan come back in this one. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Fullback Dylan Davis is in the game. They fake the give to Stanley, now throw it complete over the middle to Bunn. Bunn breaks a tackle across midfield. He's hit from behind, dropped the ball, recovered by Lenore Ryan at their own 42-yard line. B.J. Bunn was a little loose with the football. He had a 29-yard catch, but then coughed up the rock, and the Bears offense comes right back out onto the field. It's the second time B.J. Bunn has fumbled the ball. Once was on a punt return. And now, this time on a completed catch. Tough day for Bunny. Does have up over 80 yards receiving now. But he'll tell you that he's got to do better than that. He's also been kept out of the end zone. In the first four games, he had five touchdown catches. Last game, he was held touchdownless for the first time this season. And that streak is continuing so far today. 7.57 to play. Bears take over first and 10, down 29-14. Snap to Keller, rolls to his right, just a token pressure. Now throwing it to the right, three Braves converge on the ball. It's incomplete as a bunch of guys collide, and Matt Thomas Quick is the one who stays down on the turf after that collision. Right in front of the Braves bench, there was triple coverage on that throw. Not a smart decision there by Keller. Braves just weren't able to haul in the pass. It looked like Gibson, Thomas Quick, and... One of the safeties, I believe that was Tyler Threat, who all collided. And as they attend to the injured player, we'll be right back. 7.50 to go in the fourth quarter. Braves 29, Bears 14. Matt Thomas Quick helped off the field. It'll be second and 10 for Lenore Ryan with 7.50 to go in the fourth quarter. Braves lead 29-14 on the Braves Broadcast Network. I'm Cameron Songer. Snap to Keller, give up the middle to Brown. Brown breaks one tackle, but that's going to be it as Marquin Hill comes off his block and makes the tackle at about the 42-yard line, 43-yard line, just a gain of one, and the clock will run here on Lenore Ryan. Their homecoming crowd... Looking pretty disappointed. It's been pretty quiet here at Moritz Stadium throughout the second half as the Braves kind of exploded in that third quarter for 17 points. It was, excuse me, for 16 points as there was a two-point conversion that was failed. Snap, Keller flushed out, rolling to the right, being chased from behind by Vance. He wraps him up, but there is a gain of about two or three yards. How about Khalil Vance? 6'3", 260 pounds, chasing down a quarterback from behind. 
gain of just three. Third and six coming up for Lenore Ryan. They need to get the ball into Braves territory all the way to the 48 yard line. Under seven minutes to go. It's the 87th year of football here at Moritz Stadium. The Bears historically win better than 55% of their home games. And this is a team that went to the NCAA Division II championship game in 2013. And this is fourth and six coming up for Lenore Ryan. The offense stays on the field. It's desperation time. High snap, Keller. Steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle, has a man complete. First down to the 45-yard line of UNCP. Another fourth down conversion by Lenore Ryan. They've been able to just barely hang, hang in this game. Khalil Hollis makes the tackle for UNCP. Frustrated Braves coaching staff in the coaching box to my left. And still Lenore Ryan crowd not really getting into this one much. Six minutes to play. Bears have first and 10 at the Braves 44. They give it up the middle. Plenty of room. Brown tries to cut it to the near side. Gets about five or six yards. The blockers really ate up that initial pressure by UNCP and allowed the ball carrier to get to the second level, but he couldn't make anything happen. I just wonder if he's getting a little bit tired, and I wouldn't blame him if he was. As he's getting close to the 30 carry mark in this game. Through three quarters, he had 26 carries for 71 yards. So the Braves really keeping him from hurting them. Snap to Keller, drops back to pass. He's looking deep, throws short, incomplete, off the hands of his man. Number eight, Aaron Farmer, the intended target on that one. Third and five, with five and a half minutes to play. UNCP up 15. Lenore Ryan driving. In Braves territory, they have the ball at the 39-yard line, ball on the left hash. Lenore Ryan wearing red jerseys, red helmets, and black pants as they drive from right to left across their home field. Trying to deliver a homecoming come-from-behind win against the number 24 UNCP Braves. The freshman quarterback Keller throws complete to the right side across the 30 and enough for a first down for Jaquay Mitchell. Boy, another third or fourth down conversion by Lenore Ryan. I say this Braves defense got to be a little frustrated, a little tired too. They've been on the field an awful lot here in this fourth quarter, especially after B.J. Bunn fumbled on the Braves' last offensive sequence. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, and a tight end to the right side of this formation. Keller drops back to pass. He's pressured. Lamine gets the initial contact, and then the sack made by Marquin Hill. Redshirt senior captain Marquin Hill as his first sack of the year. Loss of seven on the play. Second and 17 for Lenore Ryan. That backs him all the way up to the Braves' 35-yard line. They need to get it inside the 20 to move the sticks. Two receivers left, one to the right, and a running back to the right side of redshirt freshman quarterback Gerard Keller. Play clock running down. Snap, throw to the right side, incomplete. Great coverage on the outside by Sean Everett. And the intended target Number 88, Sam Camargo. Check that. Number 86, Alex Philpot was the target there. 4.26 to play. Lenore Ryan starting to run low on time. I feel like I've been saying that a, an awful lot here this afternoon, but this is not a pass-heavy offense, and the Braves now knows it's a passing situation on third and 17. Down by 15 points, Lenore Ryan... Needs to make some things happen. Snap, dropping back to pass, throwing deep over the middle, has a man caught by Beam, the tight end inside the five-yard line. First down, Bears. But there is a man down on the play. That's, is that the quarterback or is that one of the offensive linemen? That's one of the O-linemen for Lenore Ryan. That's, I believe, number 75, or maybe 72. Get an ID for you on the injured player when we come back. But first, message from our sponsor, Lumberton Chevrolet Buick Cadillac GMC has such a long name because of the tremendous variety of cars and trucks they offer to meet every need. Great looking Chevrolets, Buicks, Cadillacs, and even GMC SUVs and trucks. They have everything from budget vehicles to top of the line Cadillacs, so why would you shop anywhere else? Try their quick lube and while your vehicle is being serviced, you can see for yourself. That's Lumberton Chevrolet Buick Cadillac GMC located next to Lumberton High School. Injured player was number 73, Ronnie Clifton. Listed as the second string left tackle, but of course 
you rotate guys in and out on the offense and defensive line. It's just a very long game. It's very difficult to stay in and play the entire game. A little bit easier, I would say, as the season wears on. It stops being so hot outside. But Clifton gets helped off, and that Lenore Ryan offensive line depth will be tested. But they do have first and goal from the four-yard line. They need a touchdown on this drive. 4-10 to play in the ball game. Raves up 29-14 over Lenore Ryan. Home team, the Bears getting urged on by the crowd to try to cut this to a one-score game. Big package in. There's no wide receivers. Play fake. Looking for a tight end. Tipped away by Everett. And it's incomplete. They were looking for, looked like number 39. Looking for number 82, Mike Evans, a tight end. So the 39 is the running back, slash fullback, Cedric Harris. They have a lot of big boys in this package. Everybody bunched in near the line of scrimmage. No receivers out wide. Pistol formation for Lenore Ryan. High snap. Keller gives it up the middle. Brown surges forward, breaks a tackle. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. 29-20 now with the extra point pending. And the decision now, do you go for one or do you go for two? I think at this point you go for one. There is an injured player down on the field. It looks like it's a Lenore Ryan player. But it is a Bears touchdown. There's 349 left, 29-20 UNCP lead. No matter what, the Braves will have at least a one-score lead after this either extra point or two-point conversion attempt. And as the injured player gets intended to, we'll step aside for just a moment. Injured player was the starting running back, Nelson Brown. That could be a huge loss for Lenore Ryan if he misses any extended time. And the Bears will go for two here, down by nine with 3.49 to play in the game. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Now they motion a man, Mitchell, from left to right. Keller will roll to his right, looking for a man. Throws it into the end zone, over everything, incomplete. The Braves stop the two-point conversion, and that keeps it a two-score game with 3.49 to play. It's 29-20 UNCP, and we'll be right back. All right, decision time here for Lenore Ryan. There's 3.49 to play in the fourth quarter. They trail 29-20. I don't think it's really that hard of a decision. It's going to be an onside kick. If they had converted the two-point conversion and cut it to a seven-point game, I think it gets a little bit easier. You just, uh, you, you can kick deep and, uh, and trust your defense because you still have all three timeouts. Both teams have all three timeouts, but now needing two scores. Lenore Ryan pretty clearly needs the ball back, and they will try an onside kick. UNCP all up ready. They have their hands team in, ready to receive this kickoff. Kicking off for the Bears is number 48, Hunter Hare. And he chops it down. It bounces loose off a of Braves player. Lenore Ryan recovers. 
first down Bears after a successful onside kick. 3.48 to go. They still need two scores. And presumably they would need another successful onside kick. After that last drive took 12 plays and an awful long time, but another breath of life here for Lenore Ryan. And if you're a Braves fan, this is eerily similar to last week where the wheels fell off in the fourth quarter. Coach Shane Richardson would tell you the same. As the Braves gave up 21 unanswered in a loss to Tuskegee after they led 16-0 after three quarters. But it's a new week, it's a new game, it's a different environment, and the Braves are one week wiser and more experienced, but the crowd roaring back to life here at Moritz Stadium for the first time in a long time. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. It's Keller in the shotgun. Motion man is Mitchell as he comes nearer to the line of scrimmage, dropping back to pass. Keller flushed out, rolling to the right, throwing incomplete as it was dropped by Mitchell on the right side. Coverage there by Trayvon Gibson. And it's second and 10 for Lenore Ryan. 3.43 to play. Well, hey, if you thought the Braves were going to cruise to a big win after a couple of big scoring plays in the third quarter, you're about ready to turn this game off almost a little bit better that we have some exciting football here down the home stretch. Certainly uh, keeping us interested and keeping the, uh, the coaching staff uh, as uh, just for men customers. They're getting gray hairs out there is what I'm trying to say. Two receivers to the left, one to the right again. Shotgun snap, Keller has to jump up to get to it. Four-man rush, dumps it off over the middle, dropped by Brown, and brings up third and 10. Elijah Williams was right there, but the redshirt freshman running back heard footsteps, dropped the ball. Pass was a little bit behind him as well. Some you know, growing pains over the course of a season. You'd think that you know, now halfway through the year, this game's six out of a 10-game schedule. You'd have a lot of those ironed out, but you do have a redshirt freshman quarterback throwing to a redshirt freshman running back, so it's not going to be easy. And Brown has been busy today, 29 carries for 74 yards. 3.38 to go, third and 10 for Lenore Ryan, down by nine points. Braves bring some pressure, they throw over the middle, hit hard, the catch made, but Mikembe Kearney absolutely crushing Patrick Rendleman after he makes the catch for a gain of five. Fourth and five coming up with under three and a half to play. Clock running. This could be the game right here. Kearney calling for a substitution as he wanted to go get off the field. After, you know, those, those big hits can hurt both guys. Two receivers right, one to the left. Shotgun formation. Crowd making some noise here. This is a big play. Fourth and five. Snap to Keller. Drops back to pass. Throwing deep over the middle. Has a man. It's dropped incomplete. No flag. Coverage by Garrett Barnett. And he took it away from Ray Beam, the tight end. That should just about do it. Braves get the ball back, 3.03 to play, and they have a nine-point lead. They take over in Bears territory at the 48-yard line, first and 10 at UNCP. At this point, you got a redshirt senior running back in Rontonio Stanley in the backfield. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Patrick O'Brien knows what's at stake here and knows what his team can do. Stanley, 10 carries for 144 yards and two touchdowns already today. I say you gotta let him eat, give him the ball. Fullback Dylan Davis is also in this formation on the left side. They give it up the middle for Stanley. Lenore Ryan converges to the football, meets him in the backfield, and I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. Quick timeout taken by the Bears. We'll have to see where they spot this. They spot it right back in midfield. It's a two yard loss as the Bears are ready to blitz. So a timeout taken by Lenore Ryan, 2.58 to go in the game. UNCP has second and 12 when we come back. It's a 29-20 UNCP lead. Braves have all three of their timeouts. Bears just used their first one. 2.58 to play in the ballgame. Braves with a 29-20 lead. 
Lenore Ryan needs to get the ball back. They need to score, and then they need to get the ball back and score again. They're going to come back and shock the number 24 UNCP Braves. Give off right side for Stanley. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another tackle. 40, 35. Cuts back up the middle, and he's free. Rontonio Stanley to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Braves. That'll do it. Rontonio Stanley gets his third rushing touchdown today, and the Braves go up 35 to 20. A breakout performance for the Braves' redshirt senior running back. He had three rushing touchdowns in the Braves' homecoming win against Tuskegee last year. This year, he goes on the road and does it at someone else's homecoming. And that puts the icing on the cake for Rontonio Stanley. He gets just short of 200 yards rushing today as Matt Davis drills the extra point. And with 2.47 to play in the game, UNCP 36, Lenore Ryan 20 on the Braves Broadcast Network. Matt Davis, his leg's probably getting a little tired now. He's the field goal guy. He's kicked three field goals. He's kicked now uh, four extra points and also punted the ball four times. So he's, he's had quite a workout today. The Braves lead 36-20. Braves kicking off again. And it's another very good kickoff by Davis. He'll be fielded about six yards, seven yards deep in the end zone by Lotharp, and he'll just take a knee. Lenore Ryan will take it back out to the 25-yard line. First and 10 for the Bears, but they're down by 16 with 2.47 left. It's not over yet, but probably just about over. You know, it's, it's tough. It's tough to come back from 16 down. They don't have a particularly good passing attack, uh, but I wouldn't say give up just yet. A lot of Lenore Ryan fans heading to the exits. I would say they have little faith in their team, but... It could also be just to beat traffic out of here, which is certainly a concern. I mean, stadium traffic is tough. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, and the quarterback gives it up the middle. Breaking a couple tackles is Brown, but he only has about four yards. Keller, I would say as a quarterback, got to be demanding some more pass plays get called. There's a man down for UNCP, a little slow to get up. Couldn't see who that was. Look like Barnett, perhaps. As Elijah Williams calls for a substitution. Christopher Plotch comes in. He'll take over the middle linebacker spot for UNCP. 2.15 to play. Second and five for Lenore Ryan. Snap to Keller. Drops back to pass. Throwing. It's tipped and knocked down incomplete. Intended for number 85, Ray Beam. Looked like Mark Quinn Hill got his hands up there and made that deflection. So 2.09 left for Lenore Ryan. They face third and five at their own 30-yard line. And they face a 16-point deficit. Tight end is on the right side of this formation. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. And Keller is in the shotgun. They give it up the middle for Brown. He's got some room across the 40, more than enough for a first down. He's finally spun down at the 44-yard line. Clock will stop as they move the chains, but it'll run again. It'll take us inside of two minutes. Carlos Manning made that tackle, and it's been a good day for Nelson Brown, but he's been the only one who's really been putting numbers on the boards today for Lenore Ryan, and his uh, carry total, his workload has been immense. Snap to Keller, drops back to throw, flushed out of the pocket, gets rid of it, complete to Brown, and he's taken down short of the line of scrimmage. Sean Everett came up out of coverage and tackled the running back for a loss of one. 
Nelson Brown has carried the ball more than 30 times. He's been targeted in the passing game a couple times as well. Redshirt freshman from Salisbury, Maryland. He's had a busy day. Dropping back to pass, Keller. He lobs one deep along the far sideline. It's a free ball. It's tipped away, and it was out of bounds anyway. Looked like Khalil Hollis in coverage. And the pass intended for Alec Philpot. So third and 11 for Lenore Ryan. A minute 17 left, as there was a lot of time in between plays there after that completed pass for a loss of a yard. And that really kind of sinking Lenore Ryan here. That inability to really put together a couple of quick passing plays in a short time to really move the chains. That's what they needed to do down 16 with just a couple minutes left. Snap to Keller. Give up the middle for Brown. He'll be taken down well short of midfield. They needed to get into Braves territory. So it's going to be fourth down here for Lenore Ryan. They'll keep the offense on the field for one last hope. But the defense can clinch the Braves' victory here. Fourth and six. The Bears have been almost unreasonably good on fourth downs. One of three on fourth downs. Seven of 18 on third downs here today. They've just faced an awful lot of them. It feels like they've been really good because they've converted a lot, but they've faced even more. 45 seconds left. This is pretty much the game. Down by 16. Lenore Ryan needs a miracle. Snap to Keller. Four-man rush. Steps up in the pocket. Throws it deep over the middle. Has his tight end. Beam makes the catch. No, he dropped it. Incomplete. Oh, my goodness. He looked up, saw no one in front of him, was ready to walk into the end zone, and couldn't stick a fork in the ball. UNCP takes over with 35 seconds left. They'll kneel out the rest of the clock, and UNCP will get to 5-1 and one on the season. Well, hey, if it was easy, uh, the Braves didn't make it look easy today. I don't think it was going to be an easy game. Lenore Ryan fired up. It's a tough environment to come play in. It's their homecoming. And the Braves will take one knee here, and that'll be the game. Victory formation, Patrick O'Brien under center, and takes that knee. And unless Lenore Ryan feels like using some spiteful timeouts, doesn't look like they do. Teams will meet in midfield to shake hands. And the first ever meeting between UNCP and Lenore Ryan goes to the Braves. 36-20, the Braves win and spoil homecoming at Lenore Ryan. What a game for Rontonio Stanley for UNCP. 12 carries, 192 yards, three rushing touchdowns, and the Braves get to 5-1. and one. They'll stay in the top 25 for another week. They were number 24 here today. Lenore Ryan with the loss falls to two and four on the season. Next game for UNCP will be at home a week from today when they take on Kentucky Wesleyan and try to avenge a pretty strange road loss from last year. Definitely one the Braves were favored in a year ago. So the Braves know they cannot overlook Kentucky Wesleyan and start looking ahead to homecoming, which is in two weeks for UNCP when the Braves will take on Catawba at Grace P. Johnson Stadium. The Braves came in, got the job done on the road at Moritz Stadium here today. And they will walk out of here winners and enjoy the bus ride back home. Driving back into the storm. And uh, hey, very fortunate that we were able to get this game in here today. Very fortunate that the Braves have been uh, pretty lucky with injuries so far this year. And as far as I can tell, no significant injuries here to anyone today. Although those bangs and bruises continue to accumulate for UNCP. We'll get ready for Kentucky Wesleyan over the next week. Looking forward to hearing from head coach Shane Richardson. Talk to him next week. And then you be sure to tune in for the Black and Gold Report. Remember, 9.30 every Saturday morning on WFXB, Fox TV, out of Myrtle Beach. For the Black and Gold Report, Next week, we'll also have a special volleyball feature as well as talk to UNCP men's soccer coach, John Miller-Racy. But the Braves football team can celebrate a pretty big win here today. 36 to 20, the Braves defeat Lenore Ryan, and the Braves are now five and one on the season. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Braves Broadcast Network. Our next broadcast is going to be next week, Friday, UNCP volleyball. That'll be a full video stream. Search on YouTube, UNCP Braves. UNCP Volleyball taking on Armstrong State at 7 p.m. on Friday. And then football on the full video stream next Saturday against Kentucky Wesleyan, 2 p.m. Eastern time. 
One more time, final score, UNC Pembroke 36, Lenore Rhine 20. I'm Cameron Songer. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great rest of your day.